And of course the camera's not working. Hey friends, my name's Aaron Ciotti. Holy cow, that was quick. Uh, everybody calls me Ciotti. I also forgot to turn this on. Jesus. Welcome to standard operating procedure. <laughs> not really. Uh, welcome to the show. Today is Monday Q&A. The main thing that we're gonna be doing is durability testing the hell out of the new Happy Model Mobula 6 2024. Uh, I've got 18 batteries charged and we're going to fly a bunch. Of, I have like prepped the upstairs with the tall ceilings and hardwood floors. So we are going to crash the shit out of this thing today and see how it holds up. Uh, I am blown away by everything about this so far. Um, durability is the missing factor whether or not it's durable we just don't know and i'm gonna try to accelerate that by just pounding on it tonight um you you know i i hope it's kind of fair to do that not everybody's gonna have not everybody's gonna be flying this on hardwood floors with big tall ceilings so 
if I do manage to break it tonight, like just keep in mind where you're going to be flying it, right? Like if you're going to be flying it in a small space like the basement here with carpet, um, it's going to be significantly more durable. And and I would love to just put two or 300 batteries through this down here uh, to kind of durability test it in a scenario that I think more people... I think more people are going to be flying it in this sort of setting than upstairs. But for me to put 200 batteries through this thing, it's going to take weeks. And I think that this is about to come out. Um, I've had a um, uh, an eBay alert for uh, Mobula 6 ELRS forever. And um, all of a sudden today, I got an email with... Uh, four of these for sale. They're kind of expensive. They're like 140, 150 bucks. Um, but yeah, uh, somehow people are getting a hold of them. Uh, so it's uh, it's coming, man. You're gonna be able to uh, you're gonna be able to get it soon, which should be fun because good lord, the the flight performance is outrageous. So yeah, that'll be super fun. Uh, in the chat, Free Lojo was first, Brad Bond was next, Kevin Sumner, happy ra- uh, jeez, <laughs> hockey rounds, not happy rounds. Uh, Kevin Sumner, Free Lojo, Kevin the Alien, David 4F, Riot9, David Ciotti, what's up, Dad, how are you? Uh, Weebly at FPV, what's up, Zotech, Northern Tier, Frank Nicholas, Safe Zone, Wake and Bake, I almost said Wakanabe. <laughs> Is there, there's someone else named Wakanabe, right? I haven't been pronouncing Wake and Bake Wakanabe for the last couple of weeks, have I? I certainly hope that I haven't. Car Guy for Life, Rome FPV, Rain Squad FPV, 661, uh, Hendrix Freakazoid, Matt Norton, Matt Trombley, CB FPV, 661 again, Lucky Douglas Otwell, Tyler Walker, Gray Hat, RC Ritter. RC Ritter, what's up, dude? I haven't seen you in a while. Have you just been lurking? Uh, it's okay if you haven't. Denzel the Terrible, Great Scott, Mac FPV, Matt Norton again, Kevin Sumner again, uh, E, E Forms, <laughs> the most complicated YouTube name I've ever seen, E Forms Excel Electric Gang, that's a, that's a YouTube name right there, uh, Forktail Devil, Brad Bonded again, Riot9, Lucky, Tyler again, Anonymous, Brad Bonded again, Playmate1, what does that mean? Playmate one says, treat it commie. What does that mean? Are you calling me a communist? I'm the farthest thing from a communist you can get. Uh, Car Guy for Life's in the house. Paul Tsang. Goons is here. Tongue out FPV. Riot 9. Kilo Zebra. Uh, Mr. Dud. James Phelps. Black Moses. Drown. Oh. What the hell? That is the worst YouTube name I've ever seen. Drowning Kittens FPV. Dude, come on. Playmate 1, Prop Junkie. What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming. Um, uh, if you missed it, yesterday, uh, I tested a fresh build on uh, Weebleed FPV prototype 40,000 KV. 0702s, uh, and it 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 was just about as absurd as as you're probably imagining right now if you didn't see it. Uh, check it out. I didn't. Uh, we had some some really weird VTX table problems. <laughs> Kilo Zebra just said, "Kicking babies FPV." <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Mars says 10 second runtime. No. Um, so. It is a really common misconception that super the, uh, Mars. This is not me picking on you at all. The, the, like what you just said there is probably um, droning kittens. There we go. Um, what you just said there. It, there are probably more people that are thinking that same thing than there are that kind of understand this. Um, crazy high KV does not especially with freestyle does not really mean that you're going to take much of a runtime hit. Um, if you ever want to, if you ever want to prove this to yourself, put 
to put a run a stupid embarrassing chest cam setup and point it down at your throttle stick and fly a freestyle battery and then play that back and you'll notice that like 99% of the time you're going to be at, at around 30% throttle and then every once in a while you're going to go whoop and you're going to blip full throttle and you're going to blip it for like a quarter of a second or like an eighth of a second and like on a really high KV motor, you're gonna blip full throttle even quicker than that, right? Because like it's gonna have so much power that you're only gonna need to go full throttle like a 16th of a second for the damn thing to go hurling into the heavens, right? So believe it or not, mega KV motors, unless you all of it. So like if you've, if, if you've got like 30,000 KV motors and you fly around and you have your, you know, your way that you normally fly, and then you put 40,000 KV motors on, you're probably not going to get much less runtime unless you change the way that you fly. Unless all of a sudden you start flying faster, harder, using full throttle more, that kind of thing, right? Um, but typically, you're going to use less full throttle because you have, like, your style. You, you have, like, this way that you fly around you have like this uh most people will kind of cruise around at a, a certain speed let's say it's 22 miles an hour right like by putting higher kv motors on you're probably not going to cruise around any faster you're just going to use less throttle for them so it's it's really it's 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 like I said, it's a super common misconception. Um, yes, you're gonna get a little bit less runtime because every time you go full throttle, it's gonna draw more juice from the battery. But like I said, you're gonna be at full throttle for less time because you're probably gonna be flying in the same location, right? If all of a sudden you go to a different location that's much bigger, yes, you're gonna use more. Uh, you're gonna get less runtime because you're at a bigger location and you're gonna be cruising faster. The same would be true if you were still on that 30,000 kV motor, right? Get get what I'm, you picking up what I'm laying down? Um, so yeah, it's really, really cool, man. You can go ballistic on the kV with your motors and still get really decent runtime. Um, the, the, the rig on the, the 11 billion kV motors yesterday we were getting between two minutes and 30 and two minutes and 50 seconds runtime on the rigs that i have that are on like 30 32 000 kv motors i get like right at three minutes sometimes a little bit more three minutes and five three minutes and ten um but yeah those are 30 000 32 000 versus 40 000 it's a mega difference and what's really cool is that like yesterday i was just hammering the hell out of that rig like i wasn't flying normally i was just like Oh my God, <laughs> let's, let's see how high we can spin the motors. Ah! So like I was flying differently than I normally do with that rig. And I still managed to get 230, 240, 250, uh, runtime. So yeah, it, the, the, here's, here's what will get you less runtime though. Going to a, mo going to a bigger motor, going to a bigger stator, uh, uh sorry, a higher volume stator will absolutely get you less runtime because that motor is going to be heavier. So for the entire time that you're flying, that quad is gonna have to pick up more weight. And a bigger stator also typically has a heavier bell. So not only is it going to have to carry the weight with thrust, but it's going to have to speed up and slow down that heavier bell, which is basically a heavier rotating assembly. If you're a car guy, think about heavy wheels versus lightweight wheels, right? You go to lightweight wheels, you will literally get better gas mileage because every single time you speed up and slow down, it requires less fuel to change that, to, to change the speed of that rotating assembly. Um, so yeah, it's really, really cool. If you stick with the same weight motor, the same stator size, and you just go up and down in KV, unless you change the way that you're flying, you will see a very, very minimal hit on runtime, which is how we've managed to get away with 32,000, 36,000, and now 40,000 KV 702s and not have like useless runtime. It's, it's really kind of magic. Uh, but then you go to like a 603, which is one step up in stator size, or an 802, which is another step up in stator size, 
and the runtime goes to hell. Like with the 802s, you'll be at like barely over two minutes. It's it's really cool to kind of see that play out. Um, it, it doesn't. Yeah, no, we see that play out on on five inch rigs. Come to think of it. But, like, with 5-inch rigs, you, you just kind of write it off, I think, because, like, 2207s just make so much power. You're like, well, yeah, of course the runtime is less. They're making a shitload more power than, like, a 2306. Um, it, it's interesting that, like, you, I, I, I tend to notice it so much more on, on the Tiny Whoops. So, uh, yeah, 702s for life on 65mm uh, on motor-to-motor uh, rigs. Uh, in the chat, if you guys want to talk directly to me, all you've got to do is type CIDFPV. If you do that, it'll light up in orange just like this, and I will read your comment. You can certainly also do a super chat. Uh, this is a, a completely crowdfunded operation that I've got going on here. This way, if I do a review, you don't have to wonder like, hey, is CIDI not trashing this product because such and such company is sending them a lot of stuff? Um, if somebody sends me something, typically they don't. Most stuff I buy with my own money. Um, yeah, but if somebody does send me something, I make sure that they know, like, hey, look, this is going to be a completely honest review. If this thing has problems, I'm going to say that it has problems. If it's trash, I'm going to say it's trash. Usually they don't send me anything, which makes it, <laughs> which makes the situation pretty easy. Um, but yeah, this is, like I said, totally crowdfunded from you beautiful people. Uh, if you want to support the channel here, head on over to CIDFPV.com. There's a million ways you can support me there. Patreon is the absolute best. They take the least amount of money and you get the most benefits. Uh, there are a couple of Facebook groups, which... I, uh, Facebook is being really weird. Like they're, they're now, they banned me for a week because they said, because they were upset that the, the title of one of my videos from last week that I linked over there was like 0702 and 0802 motors fight to the death. And, and apparently, I guess they've got like some sort of AI shit checking stuff and it didn't like fight to the death. And then they, it like auto banned me. And then their uh, their appeal process is broken, so you can't appeal it. So I just had to wait an entire week. Um, and then now all of a sudden this morning I go on there and now they're claiming that I'm using copyrighted material even though I've never uploaded anything to Facebook. All I ever do is put text on there with links to YouTube. So their shit is completely broken. I was already kind of thinking about just giving up on Facebook because also... Um, like six months ago, I got hacked on there and their appeal process was again broken and it took me 30, 40 hours uh, over the course of an entire month to figure out how to fix it uh, because just everything on there is broken basically and I'm just tired of dealing with it. So um, the Facebook groups are up there. Uh, they're saying that they're gonna uh, they're gonna delete my entire account from this copyright shit so maybe that just happens and and it's just whatever it's out of my hands that's fine at this point i i've i'm i'm just done um so you know if if you're messaging me on facebook messenger i i'm so sorry but I, we're probably going to lose the entire conversation um and you're just gonna have to find another way to get in touch with me i i know that sucks but like i'm not doing any doing anything wrong and they're appeal processes are just completely broken. So there's nothing I can do. And I'm just done pissing time away dealing with this awful website. Um, and like, yeah, it, it's just super frustrating because like they hammer on you to advertise on there and to build your business with Facebook. And then they do this shit and they just make it impossible for you to actually build your business. And like, you know, I've done a bunch of ads, like I've paid them a whole bunch of money, and then for this to happen, it's it's just, it, it's just insane. So, yeah, the, the, you will get access. Well, in theory, you, I, I have an, an auto approval process set up for the Facebook group. So hopefully that will let you in, because uh, there are people in those groups, and it is kind of cool. Uh, but if for some reason the auto approval thing doesn't work, I'm probably not going to be able to manually approve you. So. You might get added to the Facebook groups if you join the Patreon. You might not. I'm probably not going to be able to help that. I apologize, but yeah, it, it, you don't want to be on there anyway. The the website is awful and it's run by monsters. Um, <laughs> that just yeah, it, it's God. I'm I'm just so fucking angry about this. 
um, if you can't tell. So, yeah, you might get access to a couple of Facebook groups if you join my Patreon. You might not. You'll get full access to Discord. Apparently, they're also monsters, but uh, at least they don't just randomly kick you off for no reason and with, with no way of getting back on. Um, Discord is where most of, most of the folks in chat kind of hang out, so that, that's where you want to be anyway. Um, you're going to get access to a uh, unlisted YouTube playlist with a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, and you're going to get access to the Patreon page itself, which has a whole bunch of tech articles that you're going to love. So, yeah, Patreon is the best way to support me. You can hop on there for as little as 3 bucks a month. That's, what, like 36 bucks a year? Um, so, yeah, get on there. Help a brother out. I'll keep doing these live streams. We'll keep learning stuff together. If you don't buy one product in the next year because you hopped onto my Patreon, it just paid for itself. And I typically, with how often I crash and how hard I am on gear, I'm typically able to say like, hey, for the love of God, don't buy this. It'll just break on you. So like most people um, that have spent a little bit of time with me have saved that money uh, from not buying stuff or from buying stuff that actually does hold up and then you don't buy the other stuff that's garbage. So uh, it's a pretty good deal. I'm a little bit biased, but I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna save more than uh, more than you spend. Most people do. Um, if you jump onto the higher tiers, you can get in on a bunch of giveaways. Uh, this is a really good time to do that. This is the last Monday of February, which means that one week from now, uh, there will be a Monday Night live stream with four giveaways. Three of those giveaways are for patrons. Um, so jump on over there. The five dollar tier will enter you to win tiny whoop and toothpick parts. The ten dollar tier. Uh, will enter you to win 3-inch micro brushless and Cinewoop parts, and then the $20 tier will enter you to win 5-inch parts. If you're addicted to gambling or you just really want to support me for a dollar a day, uh, there's a tier where you get entered into all three of those giveaways. So with that, you know, if you do that for a year, you'll be in 12 times 3 giveaways. <laughs> 36 giveaways a year. Uh, and you're bound to win something if you do that. The, the people that do that dollar a day tier... Um, they tend to win quite a bit of stuff. And like, you know, when you win one of these giveaways, they're, it's like 40, 50, $60 worth of stuff usually. So that'll kind of like cover your Patreon for the next few months. So yeah, if you're addicted to gambling, I got you covered, my friends. Don't be addicted to gambling. Dude, figure that out. I'm not an enabler. Figure it out. Uh, there's all there's a whole bunch of affiliate links over there on the website as well. There is a Fiverr page where you can work one on one with me. Uh, I've been in FPV for almost eight years now, paying a lot of attention to all the technical stuff, and I also have a pretty deep background as an autocross instructor. So I'm really good at kind of like breaking things down into a way that's actually palatable so that you can understand them. Um, I can help you fly better in the simulator. We jump in there together. Um, and then we do an audio call so I can talk you through stuff. I can show you stuff cause you can spectate me and then I spectate you and help you out. Uh, I can help you build your quads better by not buying parts that catch on fire namely, but also custom tailoring you with a build that is specific for how you fly, where you fly, what you do with the footage, all this different stuff. Um, so that you actually, you know, what's the point of custom building a rig by just kind of like closing your eyes and pointing at parts, right? Like the point of custom building a rig is that you get propellers that perfectly fit your flight style. They're durable enough for how often you crash. They make enough power for you. Uh, a frame that you're going to be able to live with that's the right weight, that's the right geometry, uh, a flight controller that's namely not going to catch on fire, ESC, same kind of deal, uh, a battery that's going to give you the runtime that you want, but also the all-up weight that you want, stuff like that, right? I can help you out a ton with that because I've just paid attention to it a lot over the years, and I've done a ton of building. Um, from Tiny Whoop to 5-inch, too. Up north of 5-inch, I don't have a lot of experience uh, but yeah, from tiny whoops to five inch rigs, I've done probably hundreds of builds at this point. Um, so yeah, I can help you out quite a bit there. Uh, and then the other thing that I do is, uh, so I call that build planning. And then the other thing I can do is help you tune. I don't use black box. I tune by ear and just by kind of like, sounds weird, but common sense. It's not really common sense, but it's just, it, I've, I've tuned by ear forever. Um, and so, yeah, I can help you not have to dive into black box. I dove into black box for a little bit and I pretty quickly realized that like, it's almost another hobby in itself. Uh, and I just kind of realized that like, if I go down this road, 
I'm going to spend more time than I want obsessing over tuning versus flying. And the, the fun part of FPV has always been flying. And I've always kind of tried to figure out where I can spend my time the best. Uh, and so, yeah, I've resisted really diving into black box uh, to because I've also found that like just tuning by ear and tuning by motor heat, you can get to like 95% perfect. And at 95% perfect, you've got a little bit of leeway there so that you can actually crash the rig really hard and fly it home with bent props and banged up motors. When you like really tune to that last 5%, yeah, the rig will fly a tiny little bit better, but like the problem becomes like if you slam into a rooftop or something like that and it's upside down on the rooftop and you bend up a motor or a prop or something, there's a chance that you'll cook a motor or an ESC just trying to lift it back off or it'll just oscillate to the moon because your tune is so aggressive. Sure, you can go into the OSD and back your tune off real quick, but like I've found that having a tune that's like 95% perfect, it's kind of imperceptible, the, the, the difference that it makes in your flight footage. I'm sure some people will fight me to the death on that and say like, yes, you can absolutely tell a difference. And they're, they're probably not wrong, but I think for most people, it's kind of imperceptible. Um, you know, your, your mileage may vary on that, but, uh, I've done loads of cinematic work for, uh, you know, artists from like TI to Blanco Brown to Masego to, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not into hip hop, so I, I forget these guys' names. Atlanta, we have a lot of, we have a huge hip hop community. Um, and I've yet to get a single complaint about the flight footage. I, I've, I've, I've yet to have somebody say like, oh, your rig is too wobbly, man. You should, like, what's going on? So yeah, my tunes are completely fine. They're, they're usually, uh, the, the typical reaction that I get from people that fly my rigs is like, whoa, how did, you, what's going on with this? How do, how do I tune my rigs to fly like this? So yeah, I can help you out quite a bit there as well. Um, today is uh, February, what's that say, 26th, and the prop poppers are in stock on tinywoop.com, which is, look, if you have a tiny whoop or if you plan on buying a tiny whoop, for God's sake, get your ass over here and buy a prop popper right now. The price of one of these things will easily pay for itself in you not ruining motors. Uh, looks like there's a, oh, it's pre-order. Okay. It's pre-order. Do, do a pre-order. They'll, they'll ship out on 3.6. For the love of God, do a pre-order for one of these things. This is like, if you fly tiny whoops and you don't have one of these, your life, I'm not even kidding. Your life is significantly worse. This will improve your quality of life immeasurably. You will stop ruining your fingertips. You will stop ruining motors. You will stop like just pushing motor shafts down through the bells or having motor shafts that slip a little bit and the rig is acting really weird and you can't figure it out and it drives you mad. It like, I don't make any money off of these prop poppers and I'm telling you, for God's sakes, go put a pre-order in right now. It, it's just... Yeah, if, if if you don't know what it is yet, just trust me. Again, I have no there's no reason for me to tell you to get this other than the fact that it's going to make your life better and it's only 18 bucks. Um so yeah, go get one. Go get on the pre-order list. Apparently it's a massive shipment that Jesse has coming in. So hopefully he'll be able to fulfill all the pre-orders. I have no idea if he actually will. Um I have no inside information other than that. Um, yeah, Jesse posted a, a picture on his Instagram of like bins of these things. So get one. I swear to God, get one. Christ, get two. No, just get one. Get one so that we can, not we, I have one. Uh, but get one so that everybody can get one. Don't get two. I feel like I should get another one. But I'm not gonna because I want one more person to have them. They're, it's, it's, yeah, get one for Christ's sakes. Uh, free Lojo dropping the Patreon link. My dad's saying hi. Evening, evening, gangly gang and CIFPV. CBFPV says, yo, yo, what's up? Uh, Gray Hat says, you won't destroy it because you'll spend hours answering chat. And LOL, maybe. CBFPV says, nice flying. Thank you, dude. Uh, that is my favorite spot. Uh, that is one of my favorite spots here in Atlanta. It's a little bit uh, scraggly. Denzel the Terrible says, hello. <laughs> 
Team Tedward. <laughs> nice. Uh, Brad Bond says, yeah, pound it. <laughs> Speaking about of this, 661FPB says, my Blue 6 ELRS 2024 is on Maker Fire for $135, uh, a lot more expensive than I thought it was going to be. I had heard it was going to be $115, but to be honest, even at $135, the motors that it comes with are actually like usable. So it's still worth $135, I think, because like the previous Mobula 6 was 105 bucks, but then the motors it came with were junk. So you had to spend another $40 on motors. Um, so yeah, this is totally worth 135 bucks. I think we're gonna, I've heard that it's actually gonna sell for 115. I don't have any inside information whatsoever about that. Uh, so do not, do not quote me on that, but hey. Uh, Paul Sang says it's already up on AliExpress. Uh, Goons FPV says, yo. Matt Norton says, I can't even, <laughs> I can't even get the last version of my real 6 ELRS. I know, man. I know it's, it's tough, but it's worth waiting for this new one. God, is this thing good? You'll see. I'll fly it soon. Uh, Paul Sang says, uh, got that. Uh, 661 says, have you noticed the VTX and receiver is on the same UART on the Mobula 6 2024? Have you talked about that yet? Is yours like that? Uh, I did not notice that. How the hell did they do that? Let's take a look. How would, how did they do that? Uh, come on, beta, uh, beta flight's going to take a minute. Uh, hey, that was pretty quick. All right, let's take a look. I'll be damned. Look at that. Oh, it's because they're, I, I guess, my guess is because they're somehow running the VTX through MSP plus display port. I guess that's, is, is that maybe a open VTX thing? I don't know, man. I, I I try not to get too bogged down in the in the super technical stuff. Um, I try to really focus on like once something works and it's like ninety percent there. Uh, I I just focus on flying and and yeah, th that's the more enjoyable part about it. And also like in terms of like you know. I want to fly FPV for a career, right? Like I, I've, I've gotten a lot of really amazing opportunities in, for cinematic flying. And now, um, the live flying stuff is starting to, to pick up for me. And so that has a lot to do with it, but also like, I don't know. I, I just, I, I, the, the super, super, super technical stuff, it tends to be like this last 1% that, at the end of the day, doesn't really make a difference. Like spending that time, I've found that spending that time that I would have spent on the super technical stuff to get that last 1%, if I put that time into flying a bunch of extra batteries, I'm going to get like 5% better, right? And and so, yeah, I, I I tend to not be on like the super, super, super cutting edge. Like I, I just let like the brand new stuff kind of settle in, become the norm, and then I'll start using it eventually. Um, it just doesn't seem like, I don't know, but, but, but if the technical side is what you love, then by all means, like this is not me telling you how to live your life. Um, just don't hurt other people and you're doing a great job. Right. Uh, so yeah, I, I, that's my guess as to why they did that. I'm probably wrong though. Uh, David Ciotti says, Paul Tsang said, uh, would it, would it be any different to have super high KV motors and throttle limit them? Um, I'm going to read. Uh, thank you for doing that, Dad. Uh, Paul, if you type Ciotti FPV, if you want me to read your comment, um, and everybody, if you want me to read your comment, type Ciotti FPV at some point. No space between Ciotti and FPV. If you do that, it'll light my name up for me in orange, and I'll read your message. Um, I think what Paul is asking is... Uh, if you were to buy 702, 30,000, let's say 32,000, whatever, 30,000 KV motors versus buying 702, 40,000 KV motors and then motor limiting, motor limiting them down the appropriate amount to make them 30,000 KV motors, um, would there be a difference? Uh, I had two, a couple of years ago, I had two uh, FPV cycle glide builds that were completely identical. 
One of them was on 2400 KV motors. The other one was on 1800 KV motors. I did exactly that. I motor limited the 2400s down and I ran them both on 6S, identical batteries. And I flew hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of batteries on those two rigs. There was no difference whatsoever in durability, flight time, flight feel, anything. Uh, so there are, so the, the one really high end pilot that I've heard, uh, that's been able to tell a difference is Blackbird. Um, Blackbird is very sensitive. Like he, he is able to tell differences in gear that like, I've never seen anyone else be able to tell the difference to. So if you're as good as him and, or as sensitive as him or both, maybe you'd be able to tell a difference. One of the, apparently one of the things that happens when you motor, when you motor limit down is you lose a, a, a tiny little bit of throttle resolution. Um, I have never noticed that. I have used motor limiting extensively on like so many different rigs. Um, I've turned it on, I've turned it off. I've had rigs that are, like I said, identical, but other than that, um, and I've never been able to tell it. So like if you're a super, 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 super high end pilot, um, and you're also very sensitive to, to, to gear changes. Maybe you'd be able to tell, I really doubt it. Um, the really smart people <laughs> say that as long as you don't motor limit down lower than like 70 or 75%, you're completely fine. Um, I've motor limited all the way down to 70% and it's been totally fine. Hell, I've actually gone down to 60% and I've not been able to notice a difference. So in my opinion, it's completely fine to motor limit like absolute hell. Um, there are some amazing advantages to having your rigs with too high of a KV motor, but then motor limiting it down. Namely, if you go and you fly a much bigger location that you normally do, you can motor limit back up and use some of that extra power to just make that bigger spot that you're flying feel a little bit smaller. Uh, also if you go somewhere that's a high, so I live here in Atlanta at like a thousand feet above sea level. Um, I do this live flying gig in Denver, Colorado, uh, every year, which is 8,000 feet above sea level and good God, what a difference the, the air density makes. Um, and so my live flying rigs are motor limited down. So when I go there, I open that motor limit all the way up to 100% and now they fly normal from what I'm used to again. Um, so there are some real, real, real advantages. Right? I mean, the main advantage is that you can't, like if your motor is too low of a KV, that's it. You gotta buy a whole new set of motors and solder them up. If you've got them, if you buy the highest KV motor within reason, like you don't wanna buy, a, like if, if you're going from like, 1s to 2s you're not going to take a 30,000 kv motor and motor limit it down to 50 percent like that's too much it would still fly but it's it's just the smart people say it's too much i don't know i've never gone down that low it's probably fine unless you're like absolute top tier pilot but um yeah that's kind of the deal it's uh having a motor that's too high of a kv is really 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 nice um, I've been on that train for the last three, maybe four years, and it is just every once in a while, man, it is so nice. There'll just be a situation where I'm like, shit, man, I'm just, I don't have quite enough power. And I'll just remember like, shit, I got more power to go, go, you know, pitch forward, y'all left, get into the OSD motor limit, 90%, 100%, bang, done. You know, like you want to try out a smaller propeller, you know, like recently we, um, so, you know, we had five inch propellers for the longest time. And then we had 5.1 inch propellers. Then we had 5.2. Well, now recently we've got these 4.9 inch propellers. And or, um, again, recently in the last couple of years, we've had really low pitch propellers. Being able to go into the OSD and crank your RPM up to make up for those lower pitch or smaller propellers, that's amazing. That saves you so much time and money from having to buy you know, we've also seen our motor KVs for five inch rigs go from like 1600 and 1700 up to now like 1950 because we've got these props that are less pitch. Well, if you would just gotten the higher KV motors in the first place, you wouldn't have to now get a whole extra set of motors. So it's, it's really great to, to buy a motor that's too high of a KV and then limit it down a little bit. Um, also like as you get better 
as a pilot, you're going to be able to handle more power. Like it's just one of the things that happens. Your, your reaction times, I don't know if your reaction time gets quicker, but like you're just able to be quicker and, and to process things faster in your brain. And maybe as you grow as a pilot, you want that extra power. And it's just, yeah, it's great to be able to do that digitally versus having to do it with your wallet and your soldering iron. So yeah, get motors, in my opinion, always get motors that are slightly too high of a KV and then bring them down to at least like 90 or 85%. Gray Hat says, what else, uh, what else should I get while I'm, uh, while on there? Uh, where's there? What, where, where are you on? Oh, oh, on tinywoop.com. Um, my favorite thing ever to do on tinywoop.com, I'll show you. This is my favorite thing to do at tinywoop.com. Pull, pull a window out, go to their website. If you're on a Mac, it's command. I, I guess it's, I don't know what it is on PC, uh, but hold whatever button opens up new tabs and just go like this. This is the move on Tiny Whoop's website. The website is not big enough that like you won't be able to go through the whole site. Just open the entire site up in tabs. And I swear to God, just go through the entire website. Um, Jesse Perkins is absolutely hysterical. He's got like little jokes and shit met, like snuck in all over the place. It's just awesome. It's such a cool website to go top to bottom on. Jesse also has like amazing taste. So like everything on the website is awesome. And like by doing this, you're going to find blacklight reactive dyed meteor 65 and 75 frames. You can't tell me that you don't want a blacklight reactive frame that you can put UV LEDs on and have the coolest looking tiny whoop on earth. Like, and there's just stuff like this everywhere, man. There's such cool stuff all over this website, like custom dyed propellers. Come on now. You've got an extra $4.20. <laughs> God, I love this man. Um, <laughs> you've got an extra four dollars and twenty cents for some custom dyed propellers. That when when your you know when your FPV buddy is is hanging out with you, they're like, ah, the hell did you get that prop in candy apple green? They didn't. They don't make those. And you could be like, yeah, because I'm a goddamn genius. Um, so yeah, go through the entire Tiny Whoop website. It's such a cool experience. There's so much cool stuff on there. Um, add it all to your cart. And then when you go to check out, you'll be like, what the hell? $342. And then you can go in there. You can delete some stuff. Um, but yeah, Jesse's website is like the, I think it's my favorite. I mean, a lot of what, like you can't do this on get FPV, get FPV web, get FPV's website is so big that if you try to do, I, I have done it before. Um, if you try to do their whole website, get FPV pyro drone, RDQ, uh, newbie drone is not that big, but th there, it is approaching too big. It'll literally take like two or three or four hours to go through the entire website. And that's a bit much. Um, I still do like kind of rec if, if you guys have the time, um, I do recommend doing that. Like there, there is hidden shit on these websites that you didn't know that you needed that will come in so handy someday. Um, so going through these websites top to bottom is a really cool way to like learn a lot and and it's just it's just a really cool thing to do um maybe that'll fix it i'm gonna have to replace this camera uh yeah i recommend you do it on on pretty much all these websites but a lot of the websites it'll take you a long time to do that but like i said there's all kinds of stuff buried on these sites that um you never knew you needed but you need uh so do it uh jake fpv says prop popper strong enough to take off them damn <laughs> new feature and azies and some of the other 31 millimeter props that are insane to get off um it is but look do yourself a favor hop on to either amazon or ebay one of the two will have them uh and get yourself a 0.99 millimeter drill bit Oh, also, 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 somebody on my Discord uh, said, yo, I saw you using the uh, the drill bit with your pliers the other day. I got one of these uh, 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 pin vise hand drill things that makes that so much easier. And I looked it up on Amazon and sure as hell, you can get this awesome little uh, drill bit holder 
which has the little rotating thing that you put in your palm so you can you can put it in your palm and then just use your fingers to turn it uh and yeah the, the, like it, it's small enough right because it's meant for these tiny little drill bits it's small enough to actually grab uh the 0.99 millimeter drill bit um like a regular drill a lot of regular drills uh the chuck will not go down small enough to grab a one a sub one millimeter drill bit um so yeah for eight dollars and eighty cents you can get this awesome little uh pin vice hand drill you're not going to use the bits that it comes with because it comes with a one millimeter drill bit which is too big you want 0.99 so just uh i think it was amazon where i got mine from uh maybe not maybe it was ebay uh you might be able to find a 0.99 mil drill bit on amazon uh if not it's ebay you're gonna have to buy 10 of them it's gonna be like 10 whole dollars but look you could make oh no here it is here it is there you go there you go there's one on amazon if for some reason you don't want to do ebay um it looks like there's one on amazon it's kind of expensive but uh i would gladly pay 17 16 dollars it looks like for a 0.99 millimeter drill bit because it will almost certainly save you a motor and that is cheaper than a new set of motors um, so yeah, 0.99 millimeter prop poppers and 0.99 millimeter drill bits are required gear as far as I'm concerned. Uh, if you're going to be doing any tiny whooping, it's going to prevent you from wrecking motors because those propellers that are too tight, you're going to, you're going to get pissed off and you're just going to, nah, fuck it. It's fine. And you're going to just force it onto the motor and that's going to push the, uh, the motor shaft down through the bell and a lot of times you can't just buy one replacement motor so you're gonna have to buy a whole set of replacements which is 40 something dollars or you could have just bought the goddamn 0.99 mil drill bit you wouldn't have gotten angry your fingertips wouldn't be all ruined and yeah you drill them out to 0.99 and it's the perfect amount they hold on nice but they also come on and off still get the prop popper because it still helps the motors even drilled out to 0.99 um eventually you will still slip motor shafts um especially if you're if you don't have the prop popper you're going to be twisting your propellers to get them off and when you twist them that's putting a bunch of force on that motor shaft against the bell and eventually that will slip and it's really hard to diagnose it's a it just sucks so yeah do it and then you're going to be screwing around with getting Loctite 638 to try to fix the damn thing and it's just it's a problem that you shouldn't have look it's 2024 friends <laughs> spend a couple of dollars to make your life significantly better and not mega just brutalize your fingertips uh cole power says you should put in an order for a prop popper and just add it to a giveaway i'm thinking about it that is exactly why i want to buy one um god damn you i mean if i keep hitting it eventually i'll break it and then i'll have to buy another one um, if it doesn't break, I'm such a cheap bastard that I won't buy another one, uh, and it'll just keep blinking, and blinking sometimes drives people crazy, so I'll just keep smashing it, and, uh, it'll break eventually, or it'll fix it. Electronics, for some unbelievable reason, seem to react really well to being smashed, in my experience. Maybe it's just my, maybe it's just my brain that reacts well to me smashing electronics. It just flashed again, didn't it? Uh, Jake, uh, no, we got that. Uh, Will FPV says, how have you been liking the new ultralight modular frame? I'm thinking of trying it since I've had some tuning issues with the Meteor Air. Um, my, so on the, the teardown live stream Friday, maybe it was, uh, I did the, uh, my, my, my little wobbliness test with it and it is definitely, uh, slightly more wobbly than the Meteor 65 Air. That frame is a nightmare. Uh, but it is not as stiff as the Cockroach 65 V3 or the Newbie Drone Crown. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be slightly better than the Air, but not quite as good as um, my current sort of favorite frames. Uh, this could be, be, this could become my favorite frame. It is 0.2 of a gram lighter uh, than... Uh, the cockroach and the and the crown, but I don't know. Uh, we'll we'll see. I'm I'm super interested to uh, get my hands on a couple of these frames and 
the the best way that I've found to kind of test uh, these frames in terms of how aggressive can I get a pin to it, how a pin to and how wobbly are they, is I'll take a rig that I know that the tune is at the limit, and then I'll just pull the electronics out of that and drop it into the other frame. And if it oscillates and tries to fly away, then that frame is is worse in terms of stiffness. Realistically, the lighter the frame is, the more wobbly it's going to be. So almost I can almost guarantee you that this one is going to be slightly better than the Air and not quite as good as the 65V3, Cockroach 65V3 and Crown. But you never know. With, with you know, they, There's all kinds of weird stuff that they can do on these frames to help manage vibrations. Uh, one of the things they did on this frame that I really like is they put these supports significantly farther out. Right, like most frames have these supports pretty close to the mounting point here. Um, by moving them farther out, that should help with the the, the stiffness of the frame. Um, but it it's tough because like, yeah, th there's just so much going on when it t when it comes to like vibration resistance that like, Christ, that this could make it worse for all we know. Um, they also have a, a very different. Uh, duct support design here like this weird little split design could be better could be worse I don't know um, we'll know at some point but for the moment I'm leaving this thing pretty close to stock and just beating the hell out of it uh, demo FPV says newer version prop popper with spring is still in stock uh, where where's that in stock at demo uh, Gray Hat says, purple prop popper default choice is already out of stock when you try to check out. Hurry, guys. For the love of God, hurry. Sixus one fpv says, did you say you had some weird VTX table problems? I did indeed. Open VTX over MSP will create the VTX table and send it to Betaflight or so I've read. That's interesting. Um, Open VTX seems like a good thing. I, I just haven't dove into it enough. I, I have not had VTX table problems in probably over a year at this point. So yeah, the other day was very strange. Gray Hat says, uh, how, how good of a deal is a good condition used Cinelog 35 with goggles V2, GoPro 10 bones for 500. I'm planning to resell the goggles. Um, I don't know the, va the, the value of those things off the top of my head, um, but here's a really cool trick on eBay. Uh, if you search for an item, you can scroll down on the left here. So like, this is just what people think that they're gonna get for it. This doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna get this amount for it. What you can do is scroll down on the left here and where the hell is it? Ah, uh, here it is. Show In the show only, sold items. So you can now look at what things have actually sold for. So you can see that on February 26th, a Hero 8 Black actually sold for 112, 103, 95, 150 with a bunch of shit, right? So this is this is the, one of the best ways that I've found to actually see what the value of things are. Um, so yeah, I would do that for all that stuff and then you can figure that out pretty easily once you've done that. Uh... YouTube just did the thing, scrolling back up to try to figure out where the hell I was. Thanks, YouTube, for being useless. Um... Oh, here's where I was. Uh, KCFPV says, uh, CIFP chooses nails. Yeah, I almost always have Band-Aids on my thumbs because uh, I have anxiety disorder that kicks my ass. And uh, yeah, it comes out in uh, me chewing my fingernails like a straight up crazy person, but... You know, we're all crazy in our own ways. Could be worse. I could murder kittens. Like somebody's name in chat. Mothy says, uh, how about running 2S on 1S motors, but motor limit to 50%? Um, the common... Uh, the, 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 the common thought process there is that 50% is too much on the motor limiting side. Um, apparently, you only want a motor limit down to like 70%. Going below 70% can cause some actual performance issues, so I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, Kevin Sumner says, pro tip, click store twice on Tiny Whoop, and it opens up all items listings, sorted by newest first. That's pretty cool. I love when websites do that. I really, really, really do. Uh, so what 
uh, who was it, Kevin? Well, Kevin's talking about, uh, you just hold command. Uh, yeah, there it is. So now it's everything. Good Lord. 34 pages worth of awesome stuff. And then, of course, you can sort it by different stuff. Oh, you can even filter. Oh, that's right. He uses these uh, these uh, hashtags in here. So, yeah, you can even sort it. Good call, bro. Ooh. Oh. Look at that. That's the first I've seen of a, a BT 2.0 cell checker. That's pretty... S oh, nope, nope, nope. Not true. Not true. Beta FPV makes one. Uh, th I would actually... Uh, I would rather see you guys get this one because this is also a, uh, a charger. So, they've got one BT 2.0... Uh, thing marked test, but then it's got USB in and it's got two BT 2.0s. You can actually charge two batteries at a time on this thing. This, this, yeah, super, super, super handy. I have three of the damn things. They're so handy. Um, I mean, this is this is totally fine, but why not get something that does both, right? Um, that is that thing has saved my ass too in the past, where I've just needed a charger and I didn't bring one. Very cool. Ah, the clone popper. That's the prop popper with the spring on it. Cool. So that's the that's a clone. Uh, yeah, at least get this. Try to get that OG one though, because the OG one is 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 made by the guy that like thought about it. And so like let's support that guy. And and it works totally fine. Like having a spring on here wouldn't really accomplish anything. So get the OG one, and then people will be like, oh shit, you got the OG one? You're extra cool, bro. And then you'll be like, nah, I'm not that cool. I'm just a gangly guy. I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, Gray Hat says, did anyone else get the glow frame for the Lakers build? Uh, yes, the, uh, the yellow frame is in the hands of off-axis FPV, I believe. Uh, I'm still waiting for pictures of that build, though. Looking forward to it. Chomper FPV is in the house. What's up, homie? How are you? Uh, Scott FPV says, just got here, and I'm not sure if anyone's mentioned it, but the prop propers were in stock a couple hours ago. I ordered one. Yep, we've been talking about it. Almost the whole time. <laughs> uh, Mothy says, be careful. 0.99 is too loose for me. 0.95 got me to where it's not too tight, not too loose. Uh, if you have a propeller that is too loose, it is a very easy fix. Uh, get a set of or take your not favorite, very fine, sharp tipped tweezers. You could probably also do this with like a safety pin or something like that. Anything that's got a very fine, sharp tip on it. Um, and then you basically just take this and you go into the into the prop hole at like a 45 degree angle. You push pretty firmly and you spin it around. And then you go on the bottom of the propeller and you do the same thing. What you're doing, inside there's plastic, you're taking the sharp tip. The reason why I say not to use your favorite um, uh, needle nose, uh, fine tipped tweezers rather, is that after you do this a bunch, it, it bends the tips, right? The, the tips are so thin that they're not really all that strong. So eventually you're gonna bend the tips. So use your janky ones. Um, and what you're gonna do on the inside of the plastic is you're gonna score it with that tip and it's gonna make the plastic, you know, the plastic is flat. You jam that tip in there, it pushes down, but then the other, the, the outside, it's, it's like this, and then it does that. So you've got, a high point you've got two high points on the top and then you've got two high points on the bottom and it just works so good like you'll it'll take a couple times to kind of get the hang of it but it's it's just such an easy way of and like you can't do it too like eventually you put that prop off and on and off and on a bunch of times and it'll flatten it back out and you just go in there and do it again um so it's like a you kind of can't screw it up doing that so yeah if you've ever drilled a prop out too far or for some reason you've got a propeller that's just randomly not fitting right that i've tried a million different ways to get propellers to fit tighter on motor shafts over the years and that is like the simplest best easiest most amazing way of doing it uh gray hat says is 0.9 okay or do you need 0.99 if you've got a propeller that you drill out with a 0.9 millimeter drill bit and it actually takes any material throw that propeller in the goddamn river. <laughs> that is a propeller that is grossly manufactured wrong. Um, the factories seem to, to, to have the inner diameter of tiny whoop propellers anywhere from like 0.95 to, to 0.99 ish. Like the Gemfan uh, uh, 1210 by blades, they seem to be perfect at about 0.99 for me. Um, 
the newbie drone as he props my guess is they're somewhere around 0.95 or maybe even less than that uh yeah 0.9 is going to be way too small you want bigger than that but if you drilled a prop out to 0.9 it would fit on the shaft so tight that you'd probably push the shaft down through the bell of the motor um if you're worried about it look for a 0.98 millimeter drill bit but like I said earlier, I've had point, a 0.99 for a while, and it's absolutely perfect. What, also, keep this in mind. Don't don't put this thing in your drill and sit there with the propeller going, <laughs> like, put the put the bill drill bit through the propeller. Like, what I do is, and I can't wait to get that little thing that I just showed on Amazon, but I put the, the, um, the drill bit in the pliers. I take the propeller. I push it all the way through the drill bit to where it's against the pliers, and then I pull it off, and that's it. And it takes off a little bit of material, and then I test fit it, and if it's still too tight, I do that once more. I don't even spin the drill bit. Like, you're just you're just looking to take a little bit of material off at a time, right? What's the saying? You can't, you can't remove, I don't know, I forget what the saying is, but 18 people are typing the saying into, into the chat right now. Uh, my dad says, what if you use the prop popper to install a prop, then removing it would not require stressing the motor bell slash shaft pinch? Um, it's, it's really only designed to remove. Yeah, so the prop popper can't really grab the bottom of the bell. Is it big enough? Actually, it is big enough. You could actually use this to install the propeller. Um, uh, the The problem would be is that the the prop popper would be on the frame, and if if you push the propeller on really hard with this or with your hands, um, it's still gonna it's gonna push that. You would need a version of this without the slot in it, so that it would uh, it would it would tuck under the bottom of the motor shaft. Right now, the bottom of the motor shaft is going to go through the little slot in it. So I, I, you, I guess you could like pull it to the side a little bit to offset it so that the motor shaft is on there. So yeah, I guess technically you could do that. But with the motor on the frame, it's it's not going to work because the motor shaft is, uh, is higher, looking at it like this, the motor shaft is higher than the bottom of the frame. So you would still um, push the motor shaft down through the bell. Uh, but if you took, if you unscrewed the motor and you took the motor off, technically you're right, Dad. You you could offset this a little bit so one of the little forks was sitting on the bottom of the motor shaft, and then you could use this to jam the propeller on there. Um, the problem would be that when you went to remove the the only problem with the with this, and it's uh, there's no way to fix this. This is just what it is is that when you get the propeller all the way down against the bell, it's really difficult to get this thing in there. And like you scratch the hell out of the top of the motor. And like in the process of doing that, you're just straight pulling up on the motor shaft. So there's this like really quick moment where this thing, if the propeller is really on there, you can actually slip the shaft just from getting this thing started. That's why it's it's a better bet to drill these props out to 0.99 and then when you push them on, you're not putting too much force. And then when you should still use the prop popper to get them off in that first initial little wedging of this thing under there, you're not going to put so much force that you rip the, the shaft up out of the bell. Uh, that's a, I, I never thought about that. That's a, that's a good thought. Uh, Black Moses says, what's your setup advice for an 85 millimeter outdoor freestyle whoop with naked Vista? Oh boy, um, 85 millimeter whoops are really tough. Uh, Joshua and I really waffled quite a bit on whether or not to put one of those on his website um, because the, the, the main issue is that a plastic whoop frame at 85 millimeters with all that weight behind it becomes really fragile and it's like, yeah, it, in, in, in most cases, if you want something that's that big and powerful or you want to carry that much weight, 
um, you should kind of go towards like a toothpick carbon, fully carbon fiber framed build. The problem with that is that with whoop frames, you get this like really slow kind of flight. Um, and some people really like that. So the, the whole toothpick thing is not necessarily the, the one size fits all answer. Um, I, I, I've never done No, I have, I mean, I, I've had builds that are that big. That's how I know that they're not durable. Also from just seeing people in chat. Um, that's really tough, man. I like, I don't know what the proper setup would be. I think the proper setup would be just to kind of look at like toothpicks that are roughly that size and just steal their setup. I think maybe like a 1204 motor or maybe like a 1203 would be my best guess. Um, 1S would absolutely not cut it. You're certainly going to have to go 2S, maybe even 3S. Um, that's where one of the other problems comes in is like tiny whoop frames are kind of set up for a specific battery. So like your your battery selection is going to have to be based off of the like two frames that I think are available um, for that. And that's going to be like super limiting and, and kind of a pain in the ass. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really tough. Like you don't see many people doing that because of all these issues. Um, so yeah, I, I wish I had a better answer for you, man. Um, my real answer is just to not have a Vista whoop. Uh, and I know that's a shitty answer, but, um, the walk snail light is going to give you better quality than the Vista. And it's like infinitely lighter weight and easier to package. It's not 20 by 20, right? It's 25 by 25. Um, so yeah, but then you got to get a different set of goggles. And like, so it, it, that's tough, dude. That's really tough. Just Mo says, what did you have for dinner today? Um, I don't even know. Oh, uh, actually I made a, uh, a really cool like brie. So you take a, a, a circle of brie and you cut almost to the bottom, but not quite. And you drip, 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 like a pizza, a bunch of little pieces. And then you chop up uh, little slivers of garlic and you jam those in between each little cut that you put in there. Uh, and then you take a whole bunch of tomatoes and you surround it with tomatoes. And then you take a baguette and you cut it diagonally and you surround that whole thing with a baguette. Uh, and then you put some spices on there and then you take your vegetable oil and you squirt that shit all over everything. And then you put that fucker in the oven for 400 degrees for 10 minutes and out comes the most fart producing thing that you've ever eaten but damn, is it good. And that's what I had for dinner tonight. Moffy says, do high KV motors like 40,000 KV we bleeds pull more amps, uh, more than the five amps on those beta FPV boards. They absolutely do pull more amps, more, more RPM, more power is always going to equal more amps. Um, what, not so much that you're going to, uh, you need to go up to like a 12 amp FET. What you want to remember about a five amp FET is that that's the continuous rating and there's four of them, right? So it's not actually five amps, it's 20 amps. And so you've got 20 amps. And then if you look at the specs, that's a continuous rating. So you can pull 20 amps for the entire battery beginning to end and you'll be completely fine. You're obviously not going to do that. You're going to do little tiny throttle blips for like a quarter of a second where you maybe pull 20 amps. If you look, there'll be another rating, a burst rating on an ESC or on an ESC FET. And the 5 amp FET's burst rating is 6 amps. So now we're up to 24 amps total. And I've never seen that much amperage being pulled, even on the Mega KV motors. Um, but the, the 6 amp rating is a burst rating. And now every, every ESC has like a different time period for that. In this case, it's 3 seconds. So you can go 24 amps for three full seconds before you have to worry about the five amp FETs exploding. Um, and if you're doing three full second throttle blasts, you're doing something wrong. You should, there's no reason to be full throttle for three full seconds on a tiny whoop. That's just nuts. Especially if you have crazy KV motors. Like if I took the 40,000 KV rig and I went full throttle for three full seconds, a, the battery would catch on fire and, and murder 18 children. B, the tiny whoop would be on the face of the fucking moon and you wouldn't be able to get it home. So, yeah, it, the, the 5 amp FETs uh, on all of these tiny whoop ESCs are thus far completely fine regardless of how much abuse that we throw at them. Um, Kevin Sumner says, Jesse is paying royalties on the clone popper 
uh, Deluxe to Winston FPV2. Really? That's pretty cool. So there you go. You can get either one. Uh, Halfbake 210 <laughs> nice name. Uh, it says Broscone Throttle Expo is the bee's knees, isn't it? Uh, this is yet another live stream in a row where someone has come into the chat and said, yo, Throttle Expo is the shit. Uh, when, when I, at the end of that live stream, the very first comment was somebody saying, I tried Throttle Expo once and I didn't like it. You're an idiot. Yeah, I don't think they said you're an idiot, but like they, they had a weird tone, like as if I was wrong. Um, and I replied back nicely and, and I was like, look, you know, it's, it's fine that you don't like it, but, um. Give it another try. Uh, and then ever since, then, and, and I, like at that point I was like, shit, like, am I an idiot? Like, am, am I doing it wrong? And, and ever since then, there's been loads of people that have been like, yo, what a difference. It's, it's awesome. And so thank you for that. Thank you for reaffirming that um, it is magic because it really is. And like, and look, the people that say that it's not magic didn't watch or listen or pay any attention to the, to that live stream. I broke it all down. That's why it took so long. I explained what rigs you should use it on, when you shouldn't use it, like the whole kind of thing. And yeah, if it people that don't like it have not put it on a rig that's needed it and or they just don't get it and, and they're just not willing to put the time or effort in to understand it. And and that's fine, you know, they're, they're loss, right? Like, <laughs> The people that actually pay attention to the good info that's being given out by people that are technically minded, they're spending a lot of time to put this info out here. They're the ones that benefit. If you're not willing to put the time in, guess what? You ain't going to get the benefit. Sorry. You don't like long form media? Guess what? You're never going to be all that good at the thing that the long form media is talking about. Like, it's a one to one scale. If, if, if you want to be really good at something, you got to put the time in. That's just the way it is. Uh, Just Mo says, are you building Bardwell a whoop for race gal or is there one that's pre-built? Uh, I messaged him before I got kicked off Facebook for no goddamn reason. Uh, and I said, Hey man, I'm absolutely willing to send you one of these ultimate freestyle tiny whoops, but I gotta be honest. The Mobula six 2024 is so close to as good as my ultimate freestyle rigs. I'm sure that they'll send you one for free. And then you've got more content for a video that I'm sure will be well received. Um, and on his live stream uh, from eight to ten tonight, he said, "Yo, Ciotti, I messaged Happy Model and go figure. They're they're willing to send me one." So he's got a Mobula Six 2024 on the way. He'll get to experience 98% of what an Ultimate Freestyle Tiny Whoop is. Um, and yeah, that's all. Uh, to be honest, I would rather him have this. This uh, It's just dumb how good this flies. It really is. Car Guy for Life says, Any idea why on one of my quads my battery voltage jumps around when th uh, with throttle and on another it is more stable? On my OSD. What? One flight controller is an F4, the other is an F7. Could that be why? Nope. Could not possibly be why. Any idea why on one of my quads my battery voltage jumps around? Uh, my main guess is going to be that the, I think it's the shunt resistor that is what reads the, o, what reads the battery voltage, uh, is dying. There's, there's really like, if you're constant on the throttle, there is absolutely no reason for the voltage to be jumping around. I guess unless your tune is cranked up or the gyro is dying and the PID loop is coming off, going up and down, but you would hear that and you would have a bunch of extra motor heat within that scenario. So I'm going to bet you that the, 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 if it's an AIO, the AIO is on its way out. If it's a separate flight controller in ESC, the ESC is on its way out. Yeah, it's the ESC that reads the voltage and sends it up to the uh, to the flight controller. Um, so yeah, and and that's uh, that's the wonderful world of FPV, my friend. <laughs> Shit, just, I mean, look, like the fact that these things fly at all is a miracle. The fact that we can smash them into concrete and they continue to fly is eighteen thousand times a miracle with unicorn blood dripping from its eyeballs. David Ciotti says, use the prop popper as a spacer so it's easier uh, to remove the prop. 
having a hard time picturing that. Use it as a spacer. Oh, 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 to, so that we don't push the prop down too far. So we want to always push the props down as far as they'll go because when we crash into stuff, the, the duct bends and it pushes on the propeller and then that pushes on the motor shaft. The motor shafts are very weak. They're only one millimeter of metal. And so if, if the propeller is up at all on the motor shaft, it will bend and ruin that motor shaft way quicker than if we push the props all the way down in the motor shaft. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a much better idea to bury these propellers as far down as they'll go for durability um, than to, to run them up a little bit. Johnny then says, use the claw on the prop Use the claw on the prop and the pin on the bottom of the shaft. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would work. That would totally work. Yeah, that would absolutely work. But then you would have a propeller that's too tight on the motor shaft buried down and then you would run into this problem digging this thing under there to get the propeller off. Put it, here's 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 the rule of thumb. I, I've, I've been putting tiny whoop propellers on for years and years and years and years. If, and I've ruined countless motors. Um, if you have to like, if, if you, look, tuck your elbows in and push propellers on like, like this, like a fucking T-Rex. If you find yourself pulling your elbows out to start to muscle a propeller on, you're about to ruin the motor. You might not ruin it immediately, but you are doing enough damage to the motor shaft and the bell of the motor where you have ruined that motor and it's gonna die. It, the, the shaft is gonna slip on the bell at some point. Um, it's just the way that it is. It's These motors are incredibly delicate. If you're muscling these propellers on, you're gonna ruin the motor. Stop, pull that prop off, Get your ass over to eBay, get a 0.99 millimeter drill bit and take a little bit of material off. It's the only way. I, I've I've probably ruined 30 or 40 tiny whoop motors over the last three plus years that we've had these brushless motors. Um, this is the way. Tr just take my word for it, my friends. This is the way. Um, it's a, it's, and the, the wor here's the worst part about it is that when the when the motor shaft starts to slip on the bell of the motor the the quad starts acting really weird and you're going to spend a whole bunch of time trying to figure out what the hell's going on and it's just such an annoying process and you're going to waste a bunch of your time you're going to get fucking infuriated trying to figure it out and then eventually it's going to slip so bad that it just doesn't fly anymore and then you're going to dick around with it a bunch. And all of a sudden you're going to be like, oh shit, now I know what's going on. You're going to have this experience regardless at some point. And you're going to be like, fuck, I remember when Ciotti said that. That was a pain in the ass. And that just wasted three hours of my life. Um, so this is me telling you to not do that. Drill the props out to 0.99. Look, don't drill them out right away. Gently try to push them on. Not gently. G give them a little bit of force. Um, but if you start to have to muscle them on, just stop. It's, it's just, that's where the nightmares begin. And it's, it's maddening. Take my word for it. Don't, don't waste your time and freak out and smash things like me. Kevin Sumner says, uh, David Ciotti and Ciotti FPV, the clone popper deluxe comes with a very thin spacer. Uh, its fork is thinner than the original prop popper too. Really? Get both. Maybe. I don't know. That makes me want to get the clone popper deluxe. <laughs> Maybe I will. Uh, see, thanks for that, Kevin. I, I didn't, uh, I didn't even know that the clone prop popper existed until tonight. Um, I wasn't even going to click on it to read about it, but now I might buy one of the damn things. CMYK FPV is in the house. What's up, homie? 1B6748 says, missed yesterday's stream. What was the sum up of the 40,000 KV motors? Uh, they make tons of power. Watch the stream. Watch the last half hour of the stream. You will not be disappointed. Uh, my dad says, what dance did you learn yesterday? Uh, just a bunch of random stuff, to be honest. There wasn't like a, a specific um, thing that we went through. Uh, CMYK FPV says, maybe Throttle Expo is what's missing for my 75 millimeter rigs. Could be. Uh, I don't run a lot of it on the 75 rigs. What, what's missing from your 75 millimeter rigs is power and response time, um, which is why, which is what the 0802 33,000 uh, have given. And, and it's why those motors have been such a revelation for, for me. So hopefully we can get even more KV with a, a thicker motor shaft. Gray Hat says, uh, you think people don't watch long videos 
Getting people these days to read three paragraphs is impossible. Long form rational discourse uh, is almost totally dead online. Yeah, it's true. You know, uh, Joshua went on a, a little bit of a rant. I use rant pretty loosely here. Um, yesterday on his stream yesterday about uh, somebody came in and said like, yo, you need to do more shorts or no, nah, that's not what happened. I, I forget how we got on the topic, but um, he like he re Joshua really does understand YouTube. Go figure. Um, but he he said what I've tried to say in the past, but like couldn't quite get the words out about it, which is basically that there are two completely separate audiences. There are people who are not willing to spend the time, but for some reason think that they're owed everything and they should be able to watch a 10 second video and get every single bit of information ever on the entire planet. Uh, and then there are people that realize that that's completely insane. And that if you actually want to get really good at things and really understand things deeply, you have to put the goddamn time in. Um, and it, and it really is like a completely separate audience. Like the people that watch shorts are not the people that will watch long form content. And you know, that's okay. Like those are people that are just never going to totally get it. And they've made that choice and, and that, that that's okay. Right. They're not murdering babies. Like they're, they're just people that are not willing to do the work to really dive into something and, and fully understand it. And you know, the, the, like they're just never going to understand things and be able to appreciate things like those of us that are willing to understand that you, you got to put the time in sometimes. Um, and so, yeah, like people that watch shorts are not t are typically not people that are willing to watch long form content. Um, and it's one of the main reasons that I've just not done shorts at all. Um, the, the times that I've done them, it's been completely worthless. What I get is a whole bunch of people that say, you need to, to, to cut your live streams down into shorts so that I can watch them. No, the fuck I don't. I don't need to do shit for you. You're nothing, you're nothing to me. Like, if you want the good shit, you got to put the work in. Sorry, that's just the way the world works. Um, I, and for the record, I'm fucking tired of that. Like, if... <laughs> Do, look, don't say that to anyone. It's super insulting. Like, maybe it's just me, but like, telling someone to to telling someone that you don't pay to do something under the guise of like, oh, I'm trying to help you out. It, it's incredibly insulting <laughs> because like that person knows so much more about you and and like you're just coming off like a spoiled brat when when you do that you're you're just coming off as this like yeah i everything is for me everything needs to be for me like you just you look like an asshole in front of the adults that realize how the world works so like just don't do that it's just not a good thing to do and it it pisses the person off because they've heard it 80 other times and like, they know what they're doing. Like you're not helping them. You don't know more than someone else, especially if you're someone that only watches short form content, <laughs> right? Like if you only watch short form content, you don't know shit. Wake up. Preaching to the choir because everybody that's here is watching a 14 hour live stream where I haven't tested the thing that I said I was gonna test. And we, it's an hour and 22 minutes in, but. Yeah, Joshua really hit the nail on the head yesterday on his stream talking about, uh, yeah, shorts versus short form content versus long long form content. But I'm preaching to the choir here. You guys understand the value of long form content, and you know, you guys will all be able to have so much of a deeper appreciation for FPV because you're willing to put the time in, because you're willing to troubleshoot. How the hell do I watch? you know, 20 hours of CID FPV every week. Well, shit, I can just throw YouTube on when I'm doing this in the background and when I'm doing that. And I can jump over to his Discord and Riot9 has a whole bunch of audio versions of all of his streams that he puts up for free. Uh, or, right? Like, there's ways to do it. You just have to be a fucking adult and <laughs> troubleshoot shit sometimes. It's not, like, the world is not here for, for any of us. Like... The good stuff is out there. Go get it. Work it, friends. But you guys know that. 
um, yeah, reading is that right? Like, like, like trying to get people to read more than one sentence. Good God, it's like you're asking them to to give up their firstborn. Like, just come on, guys, what the hell? Greyhead says uh, also says, do you think the new Mobula Six with motor plugs will hit that ninety percent of uh, ultimate freestyle mark? Uh, no, you know it'll actually fly worse. Like th this, this is gonna be the best flying Mobula Six 2024 um, because the direct soldered motors are slightly lighter and almost certainly make uh, there. There's a little bit of an efficiency in improvement, right? Because it's not a connector. Um, so yeah, the connector version of this AIO will be slightly worse, uh, but it'll be slightly lighter than what we currently have. Uh, and it will be just as good flight performance wise as what we have right now, other than the BMI 270 gyro. But like if you've bought one of the one of the full size AIOs in the last like couple of months, it's had a BMI 270 gyro on it. So, um, yeah, as long as the new AIO is durable, which at some point when I get caught up with chat, we'll try to test um, then. Yeah, it's it's every bit as good as the the current Ultimate Freestyle rig. So that's a good thing. I like that. Morton Upshot says, "Do you think the new Mobula Six frame won't shatter after five batteries?" To be fair, uh, to be fair to them, I shattered mine in cold weather. Um, yes, I've put uh, twenty-ish batteries through this so far, uh, and it's held up beautifully. Uh, Tiny Whoop frames in properly cold weather, though you can't expect more than one crash out of them. It's just the way that it is, right? Like plastic, when you get it really cold, is brittle. There's no way around that. There, you're not going to get one frame that's any better. Um, eh, you might. These different frames are made from different materials. Maybe one material is better than another. But, you know, you have to expect if you're going to fly something, if you're going to smash something that's made of plastic in super cold weather, you have to expect it to implode every single time it hits. Um so, but, 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 but the previous generation Mobula 6 frame is the worst Tiny Whoop frame I've ever flown. So this new frame is a miracle compared to the old one. Um, and it seems to be almost as good, if not as good as the current best frames that we have. So yeah, the new frame is amazing. Gray Hat says, I just use my thumb strength with finger underneath the motor. Uh, and then he also says uh, the bits for drilling PCBs. I don't know what that means. The bits for drilling PCBs. I'm not sure what that means. Tag me again and, and say that, but more. And maybe I can figure it out. MoFPV says, uh, have you tried the ultralight HQs on the Mobile 6? Feels better to me. Uh, yep, I've tested those. Uh, I call them the YOLO props. Uh, I told Jesse that he was laughing his ass off. He said he might actually change the name on the website to that. Um, yeah, I've flown those props quite a bit on a bunch of different rigs over the last like two ish weeks, uh, on the, uh, Friday live stream. I believe it was, uh, I put them on here actually, no, on the first, on both the first and second live streams with the, the 2024 in the thumbnail, uh, I flew those props. They're great. Um, I think I like the uh, the Gemfan 1219S's better. They're they're they seem to be quite a bit more durable. Um, my main complaint about the HQ Ultralights is they're just so fragile. That's where the name Yolo Prop comes from. Um, but they perform really really well. They don't make as much power as the Gemfans either. This rig on the Gemfan props, the Gemfan 1219S's, is um th that's the setup where this thing is almost identical to the ultimate rigs on significantly higher kv motors um i don't know why i have this on bi blades right now let's put this onto the 1219 s's because i'm very curious about the durability of those propellers um and what a better way to find out so yeah let's do that that'll also bring the uh the runtime down a little bit and maybe i'll have a chance at flying all 18 of these batteries uh before the uh before i'm old and gray <laughs> uh one b67 4 h says would 0802 33,000 kv these are the amoptera motors over on tinywoop.com some of my favorites uh be okay for your jungle gym basher or are they a bit much no they're perfect power wise the problem with them is they only have a one millimeter motor shaft so they are not going to last very long 
on a heavy ass 75 millimeter build. Um, when I say heavy ass, all 75 builds are, are heavy as far as I'm concerned. Um, so yeah, the, a one millimeter motor shaft is not a good pairing uh, for any kind of a basher-ish rig on a 75 mil. Uh, but hopefully at some point uh, there will be the perfect motor for you for what you're looking for. But yeah, the 0802 33,000 KV motors are the very first motor that I've been happy with the performance of on the walk snail 75 millimeter freestyle setup. Um, if you're doing an analog build though, I just realized uh, you do not need that much motor. The iGAO 0802 27,000s are amazing and you'll, you'll probably end up motor limiting them down a little bit because they're they're a lot uh, so yeah on an analog 75 millimeter rig uh wait for those put your email address into tiny whoops website because i'm pretty sure they're sold out for those iGAO motors and wait for them they are perfect they are absolutely amazing you'll love them Denzel the Terrible says, some people just want to get into CIFV shorts. Gray Hat says, like I, uh, like I said, you won't have time to destroy it. Uh, don't you don't you dare doubt my uh, my ability to destroy things quickly. I'll destroy this in one battery. <laughs> uh, Car Guy for Life says, I hate when someone makes a helpful how-to video uh, and they clearly don't make videos often and they clearly don't make videos often receives rude criticism in the comments about the quality of the video. Yeah, I mean, like, like, look, YouTube is free. If you go into someone's comments and, and you shit on them, you're a dick. Like, sorry, but you are. Like, you didn't pay for that video and you're not helping them, just shut up. Like, if you have to type it, type it, but then delete it. Like, all you're doing is making someone who is doing something for you for free feel worse. Or at the very least, best case scenario, they instantly delete it and you've wasted like a second of their time. Like that is the absolute best case scenario. And even in that scenario, you're still a dick because you wasted a second of their time for no goddamn reason. Just don't do it. You're not helping them out. They're not going to take the criticism like they're not going to fucking read what you wrote and go, oh, I'm so glad. Yay. Like, it's just not, it, just don't do it. You didn't pay for it. Just don't do it. D type it out, delete it and move the fuck on. Let them do what they're doing. Like it's not, it's just not helpful. It, it doesn't help anybody out. If, if you really genuinely think, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I was about to say, like, if you really genuinely think, all right, look, if you have a lot, if you have more experience, okay, Joshua Bardwell is watching one of my videos and I do something that he knows that he can help out because he's done it before, right? He can email me. I guess at that point he can leave a comment, but Maybe not. Maybe it's like an email. Uh, yeah, I don't know. No, it should be like an email. It should be an email that's like, hey, man, I, I saw you do this. I've done this before. I have a lot of experience in that. I did it this other way, and it was better for me and for my people, right? Like, that's constructive criticism. If you don't know significantly more than that person, you're just, nah, 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 nah. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. And if you do it, be prepared to get called the fuck out as well you should so yeah just don't do it people are doing things on youtube for free you are not paying them to do it appreciate that and move on if you don't like it there's plenty of other stuff to watch right like it's just maddening jamie lee fpv says uh do you know when the 40,000 kb motors drop i do not uh, but Zotech hangs out in the, just email uh, Weebleed FPV or message them on Instagram, and they'll almost certainly Zotech will almost certainly reply and, and give you an idea. Hopefully, Gray Hat says, "Should I transplant my?" Uh, all that being said, Jesus, are they an awful lot of power? It, it, it's they're hysterical, but realistically, uh, I, and I think the Firefly thirty six thousands are in stock. Like, if you want to buy motors right now, he, these are these are already stupidly powerful like i'm a pretty decent pilot and those 40,000s for me are just way too much 
um, these for most people are going to still be way too much. So if you're desperate to buy motors right now, these Firefly 36,000s are so much. <laughs> You'll, you will not be like, oh, I wish I had more power. <laughs> that will not be what's crossing your mind at any point flying the Fireflies. Uh, Gray Hat says, should I transplant my old Mobile 6 to a cockroach frame? Maybe. Uh, I, I like them better, but it's... And they're pretty cheap. Gray Hat says, uh, looked up 0.95 bit on Amazon and it came back with PCB drill bits. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah, 0.95 will work. It'll probably still be a little bit too tight. Half Baked says, Fractal has some 802 uh, one and a half motor, motor shafts. Uh, they do, but they have chosen to make a t shirt that makes fun of me uh, for absolutely no reason. I have been very kind about fractal products over the years. And so they're kind of dead to me as far as I'm concerned. So I, I don't, yeah, if, if you're a fan of mine, whatever, never mind. Forget. I said that last part, do whatever you want, but just know that they're assholes towards me for absolutely no reason. Um, and that's just super insulting. So Gray Hat says, uh, did you see the video where Nick Burns crashed a fly lens, I think 85 into his brick chimney full speed like 20 times to test their unbreakable claim? I did. Um, I didn't think it was a fly lens. Wasn't it the uh, wasn't it the fox ear unbreakable? I don't know what it was, but yeah, it was a great video. Uh, Gray Hat says, I know the goal is to break it, but would love to see one smooth pack uh, dialed back 10% and less crashing. Um, I should have already done that. I flew a couple of batteries where I wasn't a complete lunatic. So check the last couple of streams. There should be that. Um, you know, like me flying one full battery with no crashing is pretty much an impossibility. Even when I chill, um, I just crash a lot. I, I have a flying style that, um, that basically like if I, if I think there's any chance of me making it, and, and not hitting the thing that I might hit the thing, I just let it go and see if I get through it. If if I don't hit the thing that I might have hit, um, it looks really awesome. And I, and I didn't have this like correction that makes it look like I fucked up. If I hit the thing, I hit the thing. Um, that's sort of just the way that I fly. And that's pretty much how I will always fly. So me getting like a fully clean battery in is pretty rare. That's That's not freestyle to me. Freestyle is like... Just go for it. Take chances. Uh, if you make it, cool. If you crash, that's cool too. Like I, I love seeing crashes, and it's also a really cool thing to put a transition on. I love to. Um, I stole this from Finn FPV actually. He he edited a couple of my videos, uh, and he kept all my crashes in, and he used them as transitions. I was like, fuck man, that is really cool, and I've been doing it ever since. So I crash a lot. Um, Morton Upshot says, Seattle FPV says, don't be a dick. That should be a t-shirt. Um, I, for the record, I stole Don't Be a Dick from Will Wheaton, and I'm pretty sure that he has a website that says Don't Be a Dick. Uh, Gray, uh, Gray Hat says, uh, that's, uh, that smooth work you did around under the coffee table, uh, week or so was amazing, blind passes, lots of control. Um, I've done that with this. Um, that's how I test, uh, the, uh, the throttle expo, actually. Morton Upshot says, that was not a reference to the it was real. Uh. What do you mean? That was not a reference. It was real. Th about the t-shirt? Gray Hat says, uh, you're right. It was a Fox Hoop 25. Awesome. Half-Baked says, uh, didn't know man my bad. No, you're fine, man. You're fine. Uh, you've been nothing but kind of helpful. Mass respect. Thank you, dude. That's cool of you. Uh, Gray Hat says, uh, I said less crashing, not no crashing. Um, yeah, I, I, I've been trying my best to to crash less. I, I, I really have, but I'm just not good at it. I'm just not good at not crashing when flying freestyle. It's just kind of not my thing. Uh, but I promise you I've been trying. <laughs> I There are nights, the, um, most nights I don't fly all that well. Um, there, there are some nights where I'm kind of dialed in. Uh, luckily, one of those nights was the initial review of this. I, I, I was, um, I, w I was I had more of a buzz after that live stream than I've had in easily over a year um, because it was like a new product. It was a product I was excited about and I was actually flying decent for for a change. Um, and so, yeah, you, you can't judge um, like I'm not that good. <laughs> like I, I have my moments, 
uh, but I'm not that good of a pilot. Like I'm fucking 42 years old. I, I, I can very clearly tell that my reaction times have gone to shit. <laughs> um, and it's really hard to fly in here. Like flying in the house is incredibly difficult. Flying in the house with like 20 fucking gates hung up that are only like this big that I'm trying to like throw this thing inverted through with like zero corrections. It's just impossible to do. Um, so yeah, everything, <laughs> you don't see a lot of people flying freestyle tiny whoops because of how difficult it is. So like, yeah, oh man, I'm, I don't know what is going on. I'm having to unplug this damn thing every single time now. Hold on. Let's see this, this other VRX is much more stable, but I think there's more sort of blinking the, the last couple of live streams. Um, I've been using the, the single antenna version of this VRX. I'm going to use, I'm going to switch over to the double antenna version. Um, if anybody has watched the last couple of live streams, if you notice more flashing tonight, please let me know. Uh, because I haven't been able to figure out, I, I think that this diversity dual antenna one, um, I think it flashes more. It, 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 the flashing, I believe, is when it's uh, diversity switching from one end to the other. Uh, so, yeah. All right, here we go. We've got 20 minutes to fly 18 batteries. Looks like the live stream's going long tonight. Hope you got some sleep last night, friends. Uh, I'm not going to guarantee that I fly all 18 of these batteries. That's why I didn't put it in the uh, in the stream title. But we're going to fly a bunch. Oh, God. Which propellers did I put on wrong? The rear ones. <laughs> uh, always something, man. Always something. No matter how many times you do this, you're still going to do it wrong sometimes. But look, man, you're in good company. We will all do it wrong together. All right. And man, I'm hungry as hell. Why am I so hungry? I guess I didn't eat. It's been a while since I ate. Get out of here. There we go. All right. Prop popper, friends, go get one. Go get on the pre-order from uh, Tiny Whoop. If you ever plan to do any Tiny Whooping, for the love of God, go get a prop popper. Zambo, uh, Lambo Drive Zambo says, take us to your limits, Aaron. I always do. That's kind of the other cool thing, in my opinion, uh, with the way that I fly, is that, like, I push as hard as I can 99% of the time. So, like, you guys always get to see me um, going as hard as I possibly can. Which, I don't know. Is that a good thing? Maybe that's a good thing. For the record, I have lightened this up thing. I have I have lightened this thing up just a tiny little bit. I took the big metal bastard off of the, uh, the VTX antenna. Um, so it is ever so slightly lighter than stock. <laughs> TX Flyer Ken bought all of them. <laughs> all right, here we go. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, right upstairs. We're going straight upstairs. The earlier I can break this thing, the, the, <laughs> the shorter the live stream will be. Oh, for fuck's sake. I didn't even get up the goddamn stairs. Here we go. Oh, God. So I have prepped the living room for flying. I've put blankets over all of the spots that commonly eat the quad and have it be unrecoverable. Uh, I've taken the water out of the dog's water bowl over here, and then I, uh, I made sure there was no standing water in the sink either. Woo! So, oh, I also turned the lights on, but it looks like one of the kids turned the lights back off up here. So that, that kind of sucks, but, uh, there's going to be, you, there is going to be a bunch of, if, if you don't want crashing, this is not the live stream for you. Look at the throw on this. Uh, I'm sorry, not the throw, the float. Oh, 
So I knew it. I knew putting that there was the the most genius thing ever. Um, yeah. I, oop. Oh, what a recovery, Jesus! All right, so I need to figure out. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> well, oh, hey, we're back. We're back. <laughs> I was about to say, well, uh, which kind of came? Uh oh. Hey, we're back. Doesn't sound that bad. Oh, oh, that was a hard one. Um, what I was about to say is I need to figure out a uh, a move or something like that that I can do that's like really sketchy. Um, these full room power loops I've done enough times where I have them pretty like locked in. As you can see, um, I need to figure a move out that's like really difficult that's going to cause a lot of crashes. And it might be something like that. Like it might be this full room. I like the full room power loop because I'm all the way up here. So when the crash happens, I'm coming down from like, I don't know, 20 feet or so. Um, and it hits really, really, really hard. Uh, so I need to figure out at one, uh, a really difficult move that I can do that happens up high. And I think it's going to be basically like this full power flip, power flip, power loop with some kind of a twist. I, I've always tried to figure out how to put some sort of a rotation in the middle. Um, I don't really think it looks very good, which is why I haven't spent a ton of time uh, trying to figure it out. Maybe it's something like that, but see, that's it's still not all that hard. I also hope that I don't wake the whole fucking family up. I, I don't know. It seems pretty quiet when this thing crashes. Um, so in theory, I'm not being a total jerk, but. Ugh. All right, so we got a couple good hits in. Battery's almost done. Let's come back downstairs. All right, so one of the things that I definitely want to do, I've been meaning to figure this out, is like a big gnarly corkscrew down the stairs. So I wonder if it can be like. Oh, shit. Oh, that was a big one. I wonder it. Oh, man. Oh, we had some static going on. Uh, I wonder if I can do it from like here. That'll cause some like fall down the stairs crashes. Oh, oh. Ah, I went for two and didn't get it. All right, let's swap this battery out. I'm trying to be less hard on my batteries. Uh, what do we got? Nothing. We good. There is a mark on top of the canopy. The canopy all obviously hit hard on one of those. Uh, propellers still look great. Let's, uh, I'm going to spin the motors up. Well, I'll do it on this battery. I'm going to spin the motors up and I'll hold the quad up to the camera. And, and maybe you guys will be able to hear the motors get more brutalized. Probably what's going to happen is I'm going to kill these motors before anything else. Here we go. Wait. There we go. All right. So let's see. Motor one, not bad. Motor two, not bad. Motor four, not bad. Wow, motor one is actually the worst. I must have hit it really hard on the right rear. That's interesting. Usually the front motors take the, the majority of the abuse. Mo FPV says Trippy the fan. I, I think Trippy spins are the worst thing that's happened to FPV since sliced bread. Um, they just look dumb. I, I don't like doing them. Um, yeah, I, I just think they look terrible. It's just it's just confusing. Like I, I try to do movements that what one of the the things that I realized a long time ago, um, and this is just me, uh, is that I I tried to start flying in a way that. Um, in a way that like anybody could watch my watch me flying or watch my flight footage and not have that reaction where they go like oh, what the what the hell are you doing it's why i stopped doing like snap rips and snap flips and snap rolls um and it's why i don't do trippy spins because it like i want everybody to be able to watch uh me fly and not just fpv pilots um it's to me it's it's less like fighter pilot shit and more camera operator again that's just me like the people that do trippy spins like i don't have anything against them 
I, I want to turn their edits off when they're doing them because I, I think it looks bad. Um, but like, you know, you do you, right? Um, so yeah, I just don't, I just don't like them. I use that motion to go around corners a lot. Um, so like, I love doing it around buildings. Like you rotate out like this and then you use that backwards momentum to throw it. I couldn't throw it cause it would have gone into the wall, but, um, I use that tail in orbit, uh, motion in a way that does look good. But to continue to do it more than like 90 or 180 degrees, I just think it looks bad. Um, but again, that's just sort of me. Um, and because of that, I don't really practice them. But like, if you really want me to do one, I guess I can. Okay. So I keep losing. Uh oh. Hey, we're back. Um, I don't know why. I... Oh, it's the whole rig that's shutting off. So I'm losing. So the rig is actually browning out. That's interesting. Uh, what's that about? So when it hits hard, could be my solder joints. I did switch the, uh, oops, I did switch the, um, the battery connector over. Oh God, what did I do? I was like, I was not looking where I was going. Um, or it could be a problem with the AO. There could be something weird with the AO. I, I don't love that whole it shutting off when, oh, that hit <laughs> like a ton of bricks. So I'm I'm right below. I, I'm right now. I'm flying completely above myself. Um, so I can really tell how hard this thing is hitting the ground because I can hear it up through the uh, up through the floor. Oh boy. Oh boy. That hit pretty hard too, but it, it hit on the uh, on the motor screws. I feel bad like hammering this thing so hard because I really do like the way that it flies, but I really I'm I'm more interested in knowing if ooh knowing if this uh, AIO is going to be durable than having another rig to fly. You know what I mean? Here's the other thing. You'll never see a trippy spin on like a cinematic, uh, like in, in any kind of like a cinematic situation. You know what I mean? It's just not, it's not a camera movement that any director would ever ask for. It, it's, it's just for, for pilots. You know what I mean? And with everything I do, I try to like relate this to relate FPV to camera movements. And that, you know, that's just me being like, a TV radio major, right? That's just kind of my thing. One of the magical things about FPV from the get-go for me was that you can take a camera and move it fully three-dimensionally through space. Like that's incredible for for a, like a camera operator. That's the fucking dream. So yeah, I approach FPV a little bit differently than most. Whoa. And I'm thrown off right now. Hey! Couch came out of nowhere. Who put that there? Still got a little bit left here. Each time I come back downstairs, it sounds noticeably noisier. <laughs> it is, uh... Yeah, we, we are doing damage. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I snuck out the side there. Oh, come on. Get out of here. There we go. Right, this battery's done. Whoa, that's way too low of a voltage. Sorry, battery. Hopefully it's an old beat battery. Nope, it's a brand new one. It'll never be the same. Let's get it right on the charger. That's ah, not bad. It's sitting at... Bounce back to 3.65. That's just okay. That's okay. We didn't kill it yet. Uh, <laughs> Gray Hat says, turn the fan on high and power loop repeatedly. Rat says, uh, why does it like you have big time throw like a five inch? Uh, it's because it's light. Rain Squad says, wall ride and spin while wall riding. Uh, that's a fun idea. I, that's a move I've kind of played around with. Uh, I haven't figured out how to get it to look really, really good. Uh, MoFPV says, same with my Mob 6. Hard crashes reboot the entire flight controller. I have not had that before. Gray Hat says, that hacked antenna. Um, do you guys notice the... Uh, the video quality upstairs is worse than normal. 
This antenna should work worse than what you're used to. Uh, Greyhead says, you must not like aux plumes. I don't know who that is. I, I By context, I think that's somebody that does a lot of uh, trippy spins. Uh, P. Morty says, if nothing breaks it, resort to the full send down the stairs corkscrew. Yeah, right. We're there, man. Great minds think alike. CMYK says, inverted 360 yaw spin at peak power loop. So you can't really uh, inverted yaw spin tiny whoops because... In order to do them quick enough, everything happens faster with a tiny whoop. So in order to do an inverted yaw spin, you have to push a lot of yaw in. And when you push a lot of yaw in, uh, it has to really fire two of the motors up hard. And then that ends up pulling you down. The, the secret to yaw spins is to do them slow, inverted yaw spins, is to do them very slowly so that the braking force from two of the motors is enough to keep it spinning. If you do a fast inverted yaw spin, the only way to yaw faster because the braking force runs out pretty quick at idle is for it to fire the two thrust making motors up and that pulls it down. So if you guys are ever having trouble with inverted yaw spins and it falling down too quick and hitting the ground, you need to do them slower. And the key to doing them slower is to do them either higher, which we can't do indoors, or to, to get it inverted quicker. The, the real trick is to hammer full throttle, hard throttle chop, instant inversion, and then you slowly do the, the 360 yaw spin. What's cool is that looks way better because your viewer, you're asking a lot of the viewer. Like all of a sudden the world flips upside down and then you're like rotating in this weird way. So doing it that drastic way with a slow yaw really helps the viewer actually figure out what the fuck is going on. Uh, Ghost Branch saying the same thing. Three invert, 360 inverted yaw spin at the apex of the power loop. I've tried them upstairs. There's just not enough room, and it just pulls the rig down too quick. Uh, yaw spin instead of roll. Yeah, everybody wants me to do that. It just, it just, just, It's just unrealistic, unfortunately. Hockey Round says a lot of extra static. Um, that's probably because of this antenna. Maybe I'll switch the antenna back to the other one. Uh, uh, am I caught up? Kevin Summer says, uh, I kind of wish I was 16 still now when we have such good quads, especially tiny whoops. I know I would absolutely kill for my teenager reflexes um, uh, at this point in, in FPV. Uh, uh, Gray Hat says, does the inverted yaw spin stuff also apply to five inch rigs? Yeah, five inch rigs. Now you can do plenty of inverted yaws um, with three inch, but yeah, like big power, proper, like outdoor freestyle stuff. That's where the uh, the inverted yaw spins are, uh, are magic and realistic. Uh, how beat up are we? Still looking totally fine. Wow. This frame has taken a lot of abuse already, and it's, it's completely fine. What impresses me so far about this frame is there's not like one spot where it's starting to crease uh, like the, uh, like all of the meteor frames uh, kind of have going on. Almost DV wondered it. All right, here we go. Wait a second. I never play around in the stair. I never play around in the in the stairwell here. What can we do reckless in here? Can we do f pitch forward stuff in here? Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I'm not, I don't hate that. This thing flies so good, god damn it. Oh boy, look at that big ugly. Uh, hold on, let me see if I can push a little bit more. No, I can't push any more. Well, maybe with these props I can push a little more D-gain in. Hold on. With the HQ props, I had a really hard time with the tune. They must not be as well balanced. Let's see what we can do here. It's not usually the PDD ratio that I like, but hey, we're fine. Yeah, these props are well balanced. We good. Yeah, see, like, that just doesn't... Look, be honest. What looks cooler, right? What looks significantly cooler? That where you can see what's going on or like this fucking where it's just like what, you know, 
the this this is amazing because if I do it oh wow if I do it right it's almost like I'm flying perfectly around the goddamn room now I can't get one that's proper because I'm trying to do it really close to the wall see how fucking cool does that look right it looks like we're just skimming the ground like in a lot of cases less is more and and I would rather I don't know like I don't I don't care if people think I'm a good pilot other than like directors and shit that might hire me and they don't they're not going to think that this is cool. They're going to think this is awful. Like if a director sees me do this, they're going to hire me. If they see me do this weird flippy thing where they don't where they can't even like watch the screen anymore, they're going to be like, "No, what are you even doing?" So yeah, like a lot of my flying is based on like what looks cool rather than like what's what's technically difficult or what you know makes me like a quote-unquote good pilot I, I just don't care i don't care about being viewed as like the best pilot there's always going to be someone better i want it to look good I, I want to move a camera around in a way that like looks good and is watchable and sometimes i feel like i'm kind of in the minority there but again everybody can can do their own thing. The other thing that, whoa, I just got a ton of battery sag. Um, wow, I can barely see what's going on right now. Uh, oh, we fell off the second floor. The other thing I just, I'm just wanting to test is just putting batteries through it, right? Just see if the AIO lets go after 50 batteries, um, because there are lots of AIOs that can't can't do that they, they you can't put 50 batteries through them uh without them letting go so just by flying this thing we are stress testing it but it is nice to uh to really beat up on it but good lord so far i mean we've hit it pretty hard to the point where like the motors are the motor shafts are bending and the frame is completely fine oh you jerk you're gonna do me like that. Oh, stop it. Let's get this battery out here before I kill it. Man, the runtime is wild on this thing, too. Uh, damage report Spotless. Yeah, I'm. I am really impressed. <laughs> I am really, really impressed with this. Uh, Mo FPV says, "LOL, uh, it's an all things inverted hater." <laughs> nah, you know what's funny is I actually I'm a huge fan of uh, being inverted. Uh, I just like to be inverted. Like I like to be gently inverted. I guess you could say. Like I, I absolutely am in such love with. Here, let me show you a couple of my favorite camera movements for freestyle um a couple of these i actually stole from kebab uh this is one of my massive favorites right here oh god i did it i did it work oh and of course i crashed it unrecoverable i did a worse job just now at that than i think i ever have yeah i ain't getting out of there hold on All right, this is one of my favorite. This is, it's really tough to do this with, with Tiny Whoops. Um, I love doing this outside, but I, I continue to try to do this with Tiny Whoops. It's super simple. It's just pitching a 180 pitch forward after a blip. Oh my God, what is happening? I'm trying to do it like really extreme. Oh, let me just do it normal. Like that, so you, you, you pick your subject and then you just, you fly right at the subject, you barely miss the damn thing, and then you look back at it. And then, um, getting out of it's always tough. It, it doesn't really work well with a tiny whoop because it's so quick. Outside, you can let that hang for like a couple of seconds, and it's just the coolest fucking thing. Um, and then, I mean, of course, everybody loves just rolling over inverted, which I love doing in this room because you can just do that kind of stuff. Um, which like we've never been able to do with tiny whoops. Um, 
and kind of stuff like that, just kind of like stalling out inverted. I just, I absolutely love it. But I try to, I try to do it in a way that like, it's not just for us. It's for anybody. So like, I'll, I'll you, you, to me, like you have to be very quick getting into it. And like the quicker you get into it there, the the slower you can be with the rest of it. And that tends to like, the, the viewer tends to have like one split second of like, whoa, what just happened? But then you slow everything down and you let them actually see what's happening. And that, that to me, that tends to be a little bit more watchable, I guess you could say. I make a lot of decisions like with flying based on like watchability. I want FPV to be for everybody, not just us. Not just us crazy pilots that are used to seeing absolute and utter chaos. I'm not as good uh, with throttle control on this rig because it's, it's significantly different than what I'm used to flying. That was pretty fucking hot there, though. Uh, so, yeah, I haven't been doing a ton of the really throttle response heavy stuff although I, I, I guess i'm kind of getting used to it maybe that's the ultimate right here like flying under this bar cart is so fucking hard like look how there's just no gap there and especially when you're going fast and the rig is kind of stood up there's just zero margin for error it's also hard it's also hard to get lined up for it um, cause it's like all the way in the corner of the room. Oh, come on. I just want to get it home before the battery catches on fire. There we go. Uh, yeah, super difficult, but we are doing extreme durability testing tonight. So no more of this, uh, throttle resolution shit. We are either full throttle or zero throttle. Gray hat says, uh, do inverted look back kebab trick over the coffee table or the catch upstairs through the kitchen island. Um, that's a cool idea. That'll generate some crashes. I don't usually do it up there. I don't fly upstairs all that much. Um, I don't know. It, it, I just, I don't want to piss people off. I stream kind of late and Maggie goes to bed kind of early. Let's see. Hold on. Let me pick a, I got to pick a subject with a little bit of a run up, but then I want to have enough space. So if I do it here. What if I do it over here? Hold on. What if I go into this bathroom and do it on the stairs? Ready? Woo! -hoo -hoo, we whipped by that fucking fan. That's kind of cool. The 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 railing is not a super interesting subject, but wish I could do it up here. But the ceiling kind of drops down here. Ooh! Oh no! Yeah, no, I can't turtle mode in the plant. That'll rip the plant all up. I'll be right back. Just disrespect it. <laughs> All right, hold on. Here we go. Back into it. Stop beeping, goggles. Oh, yeah, it's making a little more noise. Maybe. Maybe not. Ooh, Jesus. You okay, TV? You cool? All right, good. Hey, that's fun. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's cool looking. Oh, whoa. Wow. I managed to crash only into carpet on that one. What's kind of like struggling to find like a really difficult I don't want to just 
I don't just want to smash it into stuff. Like I, I, I want it to be because like when you just smash it into stuff, those aren't real crashes. Like I want to, the hell am I all the way under the, well, I went all the way under the couch. Um, I want to crash it like doing hard shit. That's that uh, wall ride with a rotation on it. It's just, it's so busy. I and mean, it's kind of cool, I guess. Oh, Jesus. That was, that hit on tile. That's an extra hard hit. Um, it's awful busy, but I do like it. And then I, I do like to come out of it backwards like that. I forget who suggested that. But yeah, the, the wall ride with a rotation thing. There's a lot going on. But it is cool if you bring it out like that. I, I do like it with that kind of an exit. I can probably do it down the stairs a little bit too. So if I, oh, no, nope, that's the wrong stick input for it. Hold on. So if I go that way, wow. Oh, you know what? I don't, I think I usually do it to the right. Having trouble doing it to the left. Come on. You guys might not be able to see anything up here. Whoa, I just got a big screen roll. Yeah, I don't think you guys can see anything when I'm up there. Oh shit. Uh oh. Oh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Come on. Come on now. Yeah, there we go. Um Oh. Oh. Oh, there's some dust coming down from that move. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. I know what I've been meaning to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought about this the other day, and I was just like, yeah, I'll never hit that. Oh, this is perfect. This is perfect. I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get stuck in that tree a bunch, though. Shit. Uh, I might be okay. I might not get stuck in the tree a million times. Look how satisfying that is. Come on now. Uh, Kevin Sumner says, reverse the rotation on the wall ride so you focus... Single spot on the ceiling. I can't wrap, wrap my head around that. Oh, wow, this thing is so dusty. It was from when I was on top of that thing. No, no, no hold on. I, I I know exactly what we're going to do. If, if I can hit the... The problem is there's no exit to this, but if I can hit this... I think I can hit this. Um, I, I just... I, I don't know of a world where I'll be able to get out of it. Everything still looks completely fine. What a beast happy model how the hell did you do this how did you build something that's this good and this durable and this light good lord man okay watch this here we go uh keely zebra says what receiver usb capture wsc stream analog for us uh it's this it's this thing uh, it's it used to be called the ROTG. If you just go to Amazon and type in like FPV VTX USB, you'll find it. There's like a bunch of different weirdo brands that sell it. Watch this. This is now kind of a beat up old battery. But check this out. Look at this move. Ready? So that the goal is to exit down here, straight down here. The problem is going to be I can't get out. I can't get out of there. Like there's this plant. And there's just nothing, but I still do want to try it. So I never really thought about how to get into it. I guess I could come up here like I usually do and then put a little bit of left English on it. But I, it would be better probably to come up here. Oh, so that's a fake plant. Um, so I don't actually have a problem mangling it. So if I come up here. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. Oh, it's going to be all dust bunnied up again. All right, hold on. I think it makes most sense if I come up here. Man, I'm going to crash up on top of that thing a million times. What if I do it the other way? How can I get out of it over here? If I come up here. Oh, that hit on tile right above my head. Oops. All right, hold on. Oh, all the way into the corner. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, it, it was cooler in my head. 
Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, no. <sighs> what a shitty, unrecoverable spot to get hung up in. Let me check my phone to make sure that there's not like an angry text message from Maggie. Like, what the fuck are you doing? She's usually dead asleep by now. Okay, no, we're good. I ask her a lot, like, hey, am I making too much noise up there? And she's always said no, but like, you know, I don't want it to get to the point where she has to say something. What? Don't you dare. All right, good. Well, let's do the... uh Oh, man, I'm getting kind of good at that. I'm surprised I haven't crashed harder from this corkscrew yet. How how extreme can I do this corkscrew? Oh, there we go. <laughs> There's a good hit. <laughs> this corkscrew, th this is this is the move. This is what we got to focus on. Here. Oh, God. Oh, no, no, no. Don't be in the plant. What? What? Where is it? Okay. Taking a walk. Uh, I can't believe that we haven't had more unrecoverable crashes. Get a good workout tonight. Woo! Woo! Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Extreme corkscrew. Oh boy! Extreme corkscrew is hard. I don't know how where I'm trying to like. Oh! <laughs> Yo! There's a big hit. <laughs> Face first. Yikes. Ah, this battery's done. Hold on. Ooh, that was a that was a good one, man. That is a that, that's the kind of crash that I want. Like that face first. Um whew, that face first kind of hit. Th those are the ones that like happen and uh, okay. Alright, so we're starting to get a little tiny bit of uh, deformation in the frame. But man, like, guys, if if I had done the, the first two batteries from tonight with the Meteor 65 airframe, it would have broken. Like, all but guaranteed. This is, uh, this is rad. <laughs> yeah, there's just ever so slightly um, a little tiny bit of... Of an extra angle here. What's interesting is that's exactly where the uh, the meteor frames start to go um, from those head-on collisions. It, the the head-on collisions push that you can see it. You can see it right here. This is where it kind of bends from those from those hits because it's it's anchored here. Um, so yeah, something's happening, which is good. I was gonna say like, what, 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 how is this possible? All right, more spirals. More staircase spirals. Oh God. Oh boy. Oh, these are gonna be full battery staircase spirals now. What about, what if I do it? What if, all right, here, check this out. That's the, 
That's the sequence right there, I think. It gives me time to get into it. It flows really nice. Oh, that was a full throttle hit. Falling down the stairs. Hey. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, this is perfect for punishment. Oh, so I, I would have bailed. Normally I would have bailed on that, but I, I just stayed in it because it was like, well, we're, we're testing. Almost made it on that, actually. Oh, I'm behind the gravity board. Gravity being the company that makes it, it's just a long board. Ooh, another full throttle hit. This is crazy. Oh, I, yo, I was full throttle all the way down the stairs there. That wasn't a very hard hit, though. Um, that was fucking cool looking for a split second there when I was really railing down the stairs. This is cool because I've been wanting to work on this move. Oh, this battery's done. Uh, I was wanting to work on, on like a really cool staircase spiral move to come back downstairs. This battery did not last very long, but this is one of the older ones. Let me guess. No, I was going to say red marker. It's actually a blue marker. Uh, all right, come on, come on, come on. Uh, here we go. Kevin Summer says, wall ride from TV by the front windows down into the stair screw. Wall ride TV. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I think only the Meteor 65 and Crown Frames would have kept up with this. Maybe the new Cockroach. Dude, the, the, new, the new Cockroach 65 V3, I swear to God, it's going to be the most durable frame. It's because of the angle that they put in the, uh, in the ducts. That I think that's that's like the king of durability. Ah, oh, oh, easy, 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 easy. Oh God, come on now. Huh. Thump. Oh no, 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 no! Don't you do it. Yes. All right, come on. Oh my God, I keep hitting. I mean, we're getting crashes in though. This is weird. It's like I want to not crash, but. Oh, wow, that's hard. That's hard to link those together. Oh! Where the hell am I? Yeah, th this is some of the worst video reception I've ever gotten. So removing the metal thing from the antenna, like, yes, it saves weight. For sure it saves weight. But uh, there is a definite cost to that. Oh! Oh my god, I can't believe I made it through that doorway. Oh god, stairs got me. Oh my god, I can't believe I almost did that. And the antenna is still plugged in, I keep checking. Oh, that's in the plant. I gotta go get it. Damn it. I got a good run there. We play around in the uh I was loving that a uh, little bit of pitch forward in the stair stairwell. I need a minute break from what I was just doing. Oh god, I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. <laughs> what else can I do in here though? Oh shit, that was a full throttle. That didn't sound like much, but that was a full throttle hit. Yikes. Yo, this stairwell can do some damage. Problem with this stairwell is it's it's so narrow. Wow, yeah, look at the jello. It's so narrow that it's hard to uh, do anything roll related in here. 
See what I mean? Like like any kind of recovery, it just implodes. So I, I basically, with this sterile, I need to just line it up and then just do pitch stuff. <laughs> oh god come on we're also doing tons of turtle moding i'm doing the turtle moding at full throttle the whole time i've never really had issues with turtle mode blowing up escs though i i, I think people just sit like the, the props get jammed and they just don't um they're just not gentle with turtle mode and i've always kind of been gentle because why wouldn't you be if you're not What's happening? If you're not gentle with turtle mode, what I don't know what to do here. I guess I have to go get it. I don't, I don't understand why it's not flipping back over. Uh, it's very annoying. Ugh. Well, that was very weird. It was just sitting in the middle of the floor. Uh, there's absolutely no reason that turn mode should not have worked there. Did I break something, maybe? Whoa, okay. All right, hold on. <laughs> there's uh, there's 10 tons of hair wrapped around these things. I'm crashing this in, like, really weird spots that I haven't uh, cleaned. The, mo the common... Crash spots, I, I kind of keep clean. But now I'm doing all this weird shit, and I'm crashing in, like, strange spots. Oh, man, this thing is just disgusting. <laughs> there is hair everywhere. Whew, boy. Running up and down those stairs is uh, starting to catch up with me. <laughs> um. Okay, I got... There was just this massive ch no this this there's this is too much of a ball of hair here. I gotta get this out. Hold on. Um, I, I'm I'm already completely staggered at this. This I don't think durability is gonna be an issue. I, I as soon as this AIO comes out with plugs on it, I'm getting at least one, probably a couple. This is uh, super impressive. I I have not like. I mean, you guys know, like, I crash hard, but, like, there'll be, like, three or four really hard hits per live stream. And, like, yeah, they, they do pile up, but, like, we've had at least 20 big, full throttles face plants so far tonight. And, like, I can't even, like, I can't even see any. It, 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 I guess maybe it helps that it's a dark colored frame, but, like... It doesn't look like there's any damage anywhere. I won't be able to see damage on the AIO. It'll just die at some point. But it's also stopped shutting off, which is kind of interesting. Maybe I just didn't, maybe I just hadn't plugged the battery all the way in when it was doing that or something like that. But yeah, it hasn't even been shutting off. Yo, these propellers too. These propellers are spotless. Uh, if I'd done half this amount of abuse with those HQ YOLO props, they'd be bent up into little accordions. Uh, so yeah, these Gemfan 1219s are equally as impressive as this uh, frame and AIO and quad. Yeah, we are lucky. We've got some amazing tiny whoop parts available. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, this thing is just loaded with hair. That's I was kind of noticing it wasn't making the power that um that it was before. And it's because this one motor was just all haired up. Yeah, I mean the these Gemfan 1219 props are like fine. The, the edges, the the uh the tips are chipped to shit from smashing into the ducts, but they're not bent up. The the HQ ultralight props uh, and these don't weigh much more. Uh, the HQ Ultralight props, the the blade just like creases. Like uh, every single set that I've run for even a couple of batteries just down here, they're all creased up to hell. 
All right, cool. We'll get some power back. That's kind of nice. We can use it to abuse it some more. Jeez, it's 1230 already. God damn. Hey, yeah, that feels normal again. Eee! Just kill the rest of this battery down here. Oh, how dare you. Whoa. All right, it's, it's low enough. Let's get a fresh battery and get back upstairs. More stair corkscrews. Uh, I'll be super interested once these get in the hands of uh, all of you beautiful bastards uh, where, the, where this frame breaks because I'm just not seeing a stress point. Like, usually I you'll see, like, a stress point, and you'll be like, yep, there's where it's going to break. Um, but, like, I got nothing, man. I'm not seeing shit. This is wild. Wild. More abuse. More abuse. Look at this thing, man. Look how good this fucking flies. Jesus, this is a binding fly. What the hell? Oh, that was just into the wall. I'm carrying so much momentum to make it over. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so that, that hair was... I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting worse. Tumble all the way down the stairs. Oh, that was a good one. Woo, that was super disorienting. Easy. Oh, whoop, oh, oh. whoop. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely getting jello-y. <laughs> like, we're, these motors are getting beat. Ooh. Oh, that was a good one. That was a thumpy crash. Which usually means that it hit right on the duct. Oh. Yay, there's another one. Where the hell am I? Oh, I know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh my god, I I I didn't know I that was just like stay in it and eventually I'll see the horizon. Oh that was a good one. That was a hard hit. Can I do the cork the corkscrew the other way? Can I like haul ass up these stairs? Nope. <laughs> it's that it's that uh that downwards momentum that really lets me corner like crazy in the stairwell, I think. Oh, man. Tough. Very tough. Okay. What is happening? Now oh, we're good. That was weird. It's it's actually it's. It's better to get into the corkscrew from here. Oh, oof. Um, trying to do it as a part of that wall ride, I gotta, like, really let it hang. Like, there's this dead zone of, like, Ehh! It looks cool, though. I think it looks cooler as a part of that wall ride. Try it one more time for this battery. Oh! <laughs> that hit like a ton of bricks. <laughs> oh, shit. That was a nasty one. Yeah, this thing is down on power, yo. It's hurting. <laughs> this poor thing. Oh, boy. It does not fly like it did. 
<laughs> a half an hour ago. Ooh, buddy. All right, let's uh, let's fire the motors up on uh, in uh, in turtle mode. See if there's one motor that's like. My guess is going to be the front motors because we have just blasted the shit out of them on this corkscrew. Let's see. All right. <laughs> Poor thing. I'm so sorry, man. You're you're just. This is your. Uh, you know. They sent you to me. This is what's going to happen. All right. Let's see. That's motor two. Not that bad. Motor one. All right. So motor two is now worse than motor one. It was not like that a half an hour ago. Oh, <laughs> motor four is in bad shape. Oh, motor uh, three is clean. Three is clean. Four is nasty. Ooh, can I see it wobbling yet? Not yet. Oh, motor four is in bad shape. Two is pretty bad too. Yeah, Th these. Um. Yeah, we've. <laughs> this is not a durability test for the motors. We don't care about the motors. We we know that these, uh, these happy model motors are, the. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if any of the motors are more strong than any of the others. But yeah, the the motors durability is a known quantity. We're looking for the the durability of the frame and the, uh, and the um, the AIO. Uh, Kevin Summers says, what are your next motors for that? You know, I, I guess 30,000s. It really doesn't need more than 30,000. Uh, so I don't even know if I would do the 32s. Uh, I, do, what, do we, what do we do here? Do we keep going? I mean, the frame is showing no signs of... Oh, my God. The frame is, oh God, that big hairball. <laughs> the frame is showing no signs of, of the abuse. Oh, I'm probably Stevie wondering, hold on. Thank you. Whoever just Discord called me, probably CMYK if I had to guess. Uh, you missed a nasty crash. It was a corkscrew crash, just like the other ones. Um, I don't know, man. Do we keep going? That's like that. I think we're at like 10 batteries and I, I just, I mean, uh, I'm tempted to kind of call it there and then, oh, <laughs> I'm tempted to call it after this battery and then we'll keep flying it, but I'll fly it down here a bunch like Wednesday and Friday. Um, I don't. I don't think we're going to hurt this frame. Uh, has this been extreme enough? Like, you know, I don't, I don't want to clickbait anybody. Has this been extreme enough durability testing? Oh, at the top of the door. That was weird. Oh, that was just terrible flying. <laughs> oh yo that was one of the hardest hits of the night that was absolutely brutal dude that was full fucking throttle all that downward momentum oh that wasn't that bad Oh, shit, that hit weird. Oh! Uh, I'm pretty tempted to call it. it it's also pretty late. Oh, <laughs> it still does that, though. Oh, God, what was that? I, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, boy, Rain Squad, after seeing this, I definitely didn't this move my lips. Um, yeah, I mean... I, I think I'm pretty, you guys, you guys choose. Um, most of these, 
most of these crashes, people aren't going to do, aren't going to hit this hard um, ever. Because hardwood, big tall ceilings, and just me being a, an absolute lunatic. You know what I mean? Like, most people... Look how fucking good this thing flies. My god, it can do all of the things that I want it to do. All It has the just enough power to do all of these really fun three-dimensional movements. Ooh. And and I think uh, I think the other thing that's going on with this rig is it doesn't have too much power. For we've talked about this a bunch, but like for a while it's kind of felt I have no idea where it is, but it seems to be unrecoverable. I felt like I was putting too much power into the ultimate freestyle rigs. Um, but I mean, there it is really fun. The the extra power is really fun, and it does allow me to do some some really gnarly shit. Uh, but I think this is uh, reminding me that I, I've definitely noticed before that uh, like the 32,000 KV motors, the 30,000 KV motors, uh, I'm more, I'm more consistent with them and I hit more battery uh, and I hit and I land more tricks with them. They're just not necessarily as fun and there are slight limitations to it. And I think this is really like hammering that home, especially because I'm flying this a bunch. Usually like I would fly a couple of batteries on those lower KV rigs. And then I'd be like, yeah, they're, they're you know, they're, uh, I, I seem to maybe be able to, but then I would just go back to the higher power rigs because power. But this is really, I think, making me realize that like, um, it's, uh, it's not available yet, Morton, no. Um, it's important to pick the right amount of power. I think like for down here in the basement where things are kind of tight, I think like the power to weight ratio of this thing is about right, which makes a lot of sense, right? This is on 28 thousands. The, uh, the ultimate freestyle tiny whoops that are a little bit heavier, the ones, <laughs> oh shit, the ones that I've felt like I've been more, um, I've been landing more stuff with have been 30 and 32,000. And so that makes sense. 28,000, a little bit lighter, 32,000, a little bit heavier, 30,000, a little bit heavier. Um, so yeah, ooh, I didn't quite make it. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to get it out of here, I don't think. Maybe, 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 maybe. Come on. Come on, little buddy, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. No, it's it's trapped under wires. All it takes is one wire, and these things are just ruined. Ah. Well, we're testing them fets. Uh, Aaron Miller says, "Have you tried wall riding behind the TV upstairs? Not behind it, because there's that big there's a big mount there. Um, so there's really no there's like kind of nowhere to go." Uh, there's also the uh, the built-ins, so I wouldn't be able to get much of a much of a run-up. E Doc's in the house. What's up, homie? I haven't seen you in a minute. Uh, it's better to have more than 20 seconds of flight time before uh, before you're having to alter your flying to compensate for sag. Yeah, that too. Although I I've only really had that experience on the 40,000s. The even like the 36,000 fireflies, um, I get plenty of flight time before the sag gets that bad. But, I mean, you're absolutely right. Like, oh, that was garbage. Oh, God, easy, don't die. Okay, yes. Oh. Woo! Oh, I wasn't ready for that. I, I, I was, like, sure I was going to crash, so... I wasn't ready to then shoot the uh, the symbol stand gap a second time. Oh boy! Man, these motors are fucked. 
The jello is just incredible. It usually takes me like a month to kill a set of these 702s. And this is a um this is a lighter rig. Although you know what? This is a lighter frame. So this frame is potentially harder on these motors. Right? Because it's lighter. Um, so that's a that's a thing. I won't really be able to test that. I, I won't be able to test, like, how long do motors last in a frame. That's going to have to be, like, a theoretical kind of conversation. Uh, uh, my thoughts on that are going to be... The, the frame that's going to protect... The Cockroach 65 V3 frame is, I think, is going to protect the motors the best because of the duct design. Um, because the, the round part of the duct has that cool little swoopy angle in it. Uh, and so... Oh! <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that, that could be a reason why these motors are so beat up. I mean, like... Not for lack of hard hits, right? We've oh god, we've we've had a ton of hard hits, that's for sure. Um, but uh, I I kind of do maybe feel like these motors have. I I expected these motors to last a little bit longer than this. So my my hunch is that this frame being lighter is um is putting a little bit more stress on the motors. So. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I'm I'm still thinking that the Cockroach 65 V3 is the frame to have. It's a 0.2 gram weight penalty, um, but I bet you that it'll. Ooh, I'm starting to get a little bit of an angry pit tune um, from the vibes coming from these motors getting beat up. Ugh, yikes. So yeah, that's maybe a thing. Uh, this frame is going to potentially be harder on motors than some of the others. Oh my god, it just wasn't lined up right. And I, for some reason, thought that I could get away with it. That sucked, because I was on a little bit of a tear there. Oh, did you see it? Did you see that big... I did crank the pids up. Oh, I didn't quite get it. What? Why? Why you gotta do me like this? Man. So yeah, that that's kind of interesting. That's, uh, that's, that's interesting. Um, like I said, I can't really test that. Like I can't, I can't crash two rigs the identical amount. So like which frame is, is, is like protects motors better. That's going to just have to be a, you know, squish the ducts and, and, and just logically say like, yes, the, the, which I can say, I can tell you 100%, the ducts on the Cockroach 65 V3 absolutely will protect a motor more. They, they will absorb more of the energy from, from the motor, from crashes, before it gets into the motors and into the motor shaft. Um, and that's a big deal, especially with like a... With a... Um, Especially with a, a rig that's got soldered, uh, you know, straight soldered motors. That does matter! Ooh! <laughs> that was wild. It just, like, rejected me immediately. Ah, stop it! Maybe me. Ah, oh, I tried to drop it down the top of the cube, but I couldn't quite get there. Oh, hoo! Ah! Oh. 
<laughs> I really, uh, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have, I got really greedy there. It, it was just so cool looking with that stall that I just let it sit forever and I was going to try to do it uh, at the bottom with one big, uh, one big throttle blast to get it out of there. Ah! I'm under, am I under the drumsticks? I think it was like under the drumsticks. That was funny. That's a new little, uh, thing that I realized the other day I could do. Come in the side of this. And throw a power loop out the side. And I can like throw another one out this front. Ah! Oh! What was that noise? Oh, I hit a leaf. Yo! That was hot shit. I didn't realize I could do that. Uh, you guys just saw the, a new move be born. Hold on. That is fucking cool. Hold up. We're going to spend a battery doing that. Ooh, yeah. Here we go. Check this out. Come on, ELRS. You can do it. Nope, what? Nope. It's, you can, I can almost get into it from like a wall ride type of thing. So if I come, yeah, these motors are hammered ass. Whoa, this battery's done. Uh, let's see if it. Let's see if the battery bounces back. Nope, it just didn't get charged. That's weird. How did that happen? It was over there. Uh, this is a green marker battery. That's not that old. Yeah, no, it just didn't get charged. That's weird. Okay, hold on. Hold on. <gasps> oh, I can. I think I can even do that from above the table. Oh man, I can do that in a super sketchy way. Watch this. this is, I'm gonna hit myself in the head doing this. And I'm gonna hit myself in the head at full throttle so it's gonna suck. So I can do this move from up here, ready? Ah! And then get it into it, get into it from a, for the dive. Easy. Under the table, oh! Couldn't avoid myself. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to get in there. The first time I did it was lucky, I think. I kind of want to do it from up here now. Oh! -hoo -hoo! Getting into it's one thing. Oh, stop it. Ah! <laughs> I gotta cut it close there. Oh, dude, that is so fucking cool looking. Cut it closer. Angle! Yeah! Yo! That is dope! So the... Alright, so here's how to... Here's how to break this shit down, yo. You gotta maximize. You gotta maximize the with tiny whooping inside. You gotta maximize everything. Low to the ground, low, low, low. Close here on the corner of the desk. Hold on. Come on. Stop it. So as I come under here, nice and low, full throttle, right up in this corner. I want to be real close to the top of this because that's gonna give me the most space and time to throw it up high. It's all about like min maxing inside. And so that's that's gonna be the key to this. Close to this corner, and now I've got the most possible time to be able to just let my eyes adjust and figure out where the hell I'm going. And then it just I mean it just gives you more time to get, get the job done. Oh god! No, oh, that's gonna be unrecoverable. <laughs> I've crashed down there quite a few times. Uh, as you can probably guess. Uh, where you at, little guy? Over there, how'd you get there? That's weird. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, this battery did not last very long. Okay, I'm over here. Uh, we've flown a lot of batteries. We have flown 14 batteries, I think. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Fourteen batteries. 
There are four left. It is 12.53. Do we keep going? I think we keep going. Especially because I want to get better at this. I want to do, uh, I want to like nail this down. And I usually don't have the motivation to do, uh, to drill stuff like this and do it over and over and over again. Let's do at least one more. And then I can say that three more times and then we'll have flown all 18. Ooh, almost Stevie wondered it. Come on, we go. Hey, hey, easy, easy. Oh, I missed it completely. <laughs> too a little too big of a uh, a little too big of a throttle blip on the uh, on the wall there, and it pulled me off the wall. Ah, now too a little bit too less on that one. I I uh, I overcompensated. Throw it into a line here. Ah! See how when I get really close to that corner, it I have like much of a better chance of getting this thing done, getting this trick in. Ooh! Okay, I went all the way through it. That was not on purpose, but all's well that ends well. Ah! Ah, come on. It also gives you, if, if you do it right, you give yourself some time to make like a correction or two. Don't fuck with me like this. Yeah, there we go. That'll come out. Yep. Easy, easy, easy. Whoa. Yeah! Almost. Starting to fly like a racer, making all these quick little corrections. Ah! I didn't think I was gonna make it. I don't know what happened there. That was weird. Oh, that was ugly. <laughs> what was that? What was that? See that? So I, I tried to kill that forward momentum and and rip it back through this. The the higher KV motors would have done that. Th this is this is an example of something that. See, I didn't. The the really high KV motors. I can be booking towards this and just do that, and it, and it'll go like that. But um, and just now I wasn't. I didn't carry that momentum. See that same deal. It didn't. It didn't. Uh, it just didn't have the power to change directions. That's some. That's an example of something. The 32,000, 36,000 KV motors will do. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hey, here we come. I'm getting way better at the dive tunnel. Ah! Sometimes I just can't decide where to go, like left versus right, so I'll just go dead straight. <laughs> it's weird. Ooh, this battery just shit the bed. Ah, that's hard, yo. The the dive tunnel is really difficult. It doesn't look like it should be as difficult it is as it is. It's kind of strange. I've, I've never really been under, able to understand why the dive tunnel is so hard. I mean, like, it just it doesn't, you know, like it's all big. It looks like it, it'd be just fine to get in there, but I don't know. Shit's going fast. Six is one says you have to say last pack. Jason Black says. Is it possible to fly 1002, 22,000 KV inside on a Pro 75 frame? Anything's possible, Jason, but you're not going to have fun doing that, man. It, it, I've done it before on the stream, and it's just you're holding on for dear life the whole time. You're not, you're not really flying. You're just trying to not crash, and that's that's not all that enjoyable um, to me personally. Uh, that is a very, very, very outdoor rig that you're talking about there. <laughs> no see there like i just i couldn't decide left or right so i just went straight no that was just me being a dipshit oh 
<laughs> it hit both the snare drum and the bass drum. That was terrific. Oh, boy. That was screaming. Ah, that's hard. Jesus, I'm trying to, like, not hit myself in the head. Oh, my God, why? Oh, shitters. Oh, come on. Get out of there. Oh, that was almost there. I, I didn't get the trajectory quite, quite right. Yeah, there we go. A little ugly. Oh man, yeah, it is hard. It is hard to to control the momentum. Because we got all this momentum going in this direction towards this wall, and I gotta cook it off, and then I gotta turn it over, and then I gotta figure out the exit. Ooh. All these little crashes do add up, for the record. I know these aren't the big crashes that we were doing before. See, the other, like, that, like, yeah, I got out of that cleanly, but it looked like shit because, like, I was all over the place on the exit. I hate that. Like, that's not, that's not really hitting the move to me. That's, that's just this weird, like, like, yeah, technically I did it, but I don't know. For, for me to, to consider a move, like, yeah, I, I hit that. It, the exit has to be smooth. There's only two batteries left, so we might as well just do it. And they're, they're these old beat-up batteries, so they're not going to run for very long. 18 batteries tonight, my friends. Uh, probably 10 of which were absolute hammered, destructomatic, just hardwood floor, big elevation, full throttle hits. As soon as this AIO is available, I'm getting at least one, probably two. Uh, I don't think we have anything to worry about. I think this is, we now have another durable. Woo! Uh, another durable freestyle Tiny Whoop AIO. Although I don't really consider this to be a freestyle AIO. I consider this to be a racing AIO because of the direct soldered motors. But there will be a plug version of this AIO, and uh, yeah, I'm all over that. Oh, wow, I'm fucking sloppy all of a sudden. Come on. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 what? Hold on. Hold on. That's pretty cool. How have I never thought to do that before? So you, you can do it with pitch back like that, or you can do it sideways. Come in like this, and exit out like that. Ooh, dude, we're figuring out all kinds of shit tonight. I, I like to do this backwards, though. It's, it's, a, it's like a pseudo rewind. You do it anywhere. You do it here. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. Don't do me like this. Stop it! Let me out! No! Let me out! Let me out! Please! Just gotta ask nicely. That should be it. No, what the hell? Please. Arrgh! I don't think it's gonna come out of there. Man, I can never not get it freed up from here. I mean, the ESC is fine. Wow. I, I cannot remember the last time I couldn't get an MGM from uh, this little thing. This little cube. Oh, 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 oh. It's all tied up. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, it, it had pulled a... Uh, it pulled the thread off there. That's why it wouldn't come out. Uh, man, I'm just... This thing is... Uh, wow. 
<laughs> what a thing, dude. What a durable little fucker. Ah. Yeah, I think I'm uh I think I'm just I'm hungry, I'm tired now. 18 batteries is is a lot. Ah. Starting to miss dumb shit now. Ah. <laughs> Come on now. No, I can't even. Ugh. Look at all these corrections. Oh, ugly. Yeah, that. Oh God, what's what am I knocking over this time? Whoa, is battery done? Last battery, friends. Car guy for life says you've entered your flow state. Let, let's let's try to get into that. Hold on. Let, let's. We've done plenty of bashing. Let's do a uh, a flowy, slower, more gentle, cool battery. I'm gonna turn off the uh, turn off the OSD, and we're just gonna we're just gonna float around. Thanks for hanging, friends. Very very cool of you. But let's just chill out for this one. Tempted to throw music on. Uh, I'm gonna throw music on. Hold on. Music. Copyright. Copyright free. Yeah, that'll work. I'm just gonna turn it up so we can all hear it together. I actually kind of tried to use that as a bounce back. What the hell? What? 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 What is happening? How is this possible? What are you doing? Never give up! Sometimes give up. How is this possible? None of these stands have anything vertical to get stuck on. Why? Uh, this makes no sense. Perfect timing. Whoa, what's happening? What's, what's, why is it, what's happening? Why is it like this? Why, what's happening? What, what's going on? Uh, oh god, one of the blades is just wrecked. How did that happen?
One of the propeller blades is just absolutely ruined. I kind of bent it back. Let's see if it's... I should really replace it. Oh no, it's angry. Oh yeah, too angry. Alright, that's it. That, we'll end it there. I need to put new props on it. When I was banging it around, I'm... Oh yeah. <laughs> the props are hammered ass. I don't know what happened. Yeah, no. The propellers are... have given it up. <laughs> have given up the, uh... <laughs> the ghost. <laughs> yeah, two of the... Jesus. Yeah, I mean, I was, like, banging it around under under metal and shit, so it, it just freaked out. Uh... I have absolutely no idea how this this flies so good is so light i know why it flies so good but i don't understand how this is so light and and it's this durable it being light is part of the reason that it's durable i get that um but like the 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 frame shows no signs of like 10 of the hardest batteries ever the the frame is is fine like, usually we'll start to see, like, creases develop up in here. And, like, the, the ducts will get all whacked out. Like, look at the abuse that the top of this has taken. Like, look at that. Up there. It's just fine. I did replace the, the front and rear screws with longer ones. Um... Just because of the design of this canopy, you can see they're longer because they're peeking through on the bottom there. See how it's peeking through there? This is the normal length screws. They don't do that. Um, so when I did do that, but like, yeah. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. One of the, uh, one of the propeller blades, just so you guys know what I just saw. One of the propeller blades was like that. Uh, I can't even... One of the prop blades was like that <laughs> just now. That's why I was all jacked up. So I tried to bend it back, but no, like these propellers need to be changed. Speaking of these propellers, look at them. After all that abuse, look at these propellers. Like they're fine. They, they took me being a complete lunatic, frustrated as hell under metal, just jamming the sticks around uh, to uh, to do anything to them. So yeah massive massive thumbs up to the gem fan um 1219 s's and the the miracle that is the mobula 6 2024 uh i'm i'm blown away i'm blown away great job happy model good lord uh get you one my friends uh, this is super impressive uh, the the we'll do some frame testing when when I can get my hands on uh, one of these frames. We'll compare it to the Cockroach 65. I have a I have a uh, e Doc says leaning edge of the back left prop looks pretty chewed up. Leaning edge of the back left. Yeah, the 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 props are definitely chewed up from smacking into the. So this is another one of these frames where the um the round part of the duct is a little bit too high this is another reason why i think i'm going to end up switching this over to the cockroach 65 v3 um so that's why the the leading edge of the props are all chipped up because when this thing crashes um as i've shown you guys before the 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 round part of the duct is too high and so it's pushing through and then the propeller uh, is slamming into the into the vertical standoffs. So I definitely don't love that about this frame. Every single other frame other than the cockroach is like that though. So I can't ding it too bad for that because that's like the norm. But uh, the AIO seems to be plenty durable. Um, and these propellers also seem to be really durable. And I was... I was wondering about that. So great job, Gem Fan, on these props. Great job, Happy Model, on this rig. Uh, wow. You guys happy with that durability testing? Was that enough? Oh, wow. Look at the the clump of nonsense that was under that. 
It was under that motor, under that propeller just now. Jesus. Um, jeez. Jeez. Uh, don't lock me. It's not even available yet, so you, you can't really judge the, the price. Um, I've heard it's going to be 115 bucks though. Uh, and you can't really compare this to the Mo Beetle. The, the, the Mo Beetle has the worst AIO that's pretty much ever been made for Tiny Whoops. Um, so it makes sense that the Mo Beetle would be cheap because they just want to get rid of that AIO. It's just junk. Uh, this is, this is a proper, proper, proper Tiny Whoop that you can abuse, that you can fly hard. Um, and, uh. And you can actually put powerful motors on. Wow! Super impressive. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Thanks for hanging, friends. Good lord. Uh, a couple of awesome streams in a row. Thank you for um, hanging with me during them. Yeah, the props are beat. The props are beat. Uh, and again, this frame is lighter than than some of these other lightweight frames, so it's going to be a little bit more wobbly. Uh, damn, yo! Can't wait to get one of these AIOs with plugs on it. It'll be available. Uh, here comes some flying from uh, the cross building, as I call it. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Uh, it is 180 degree uh, BT 2.0. Yeah. Um, Beta FPV now sells them. They're brand new. They're awesome. I love them. Be good, my friends. Lots of good content. If you, mass if you missed the last couple of streams on this rig, uh, I've, I've done like the review kind of thing. Uh, I've done the tear it all apart and weigh everything. And now I've done the durability testing. So, um, yeah, you might see a little bit less of this rig, but we are still going to fly it a little bit more. Uh, but I, I feel like I've done pretty much everything that I want to do with this. Uh, if you have some other ideas, let me know over on the Discord. CIDFPV.com to support me. I am completely crowdfunded so that every review I do is not bought and paid for by the manufacturer. Um, I have no reason not to be honest because you guys pay my bills. So head on over to CIDFPV.com, click some buttons, join the Patreon, buy some stuff, and I'll keep doing this forever. Love you guys. Bye. I'm not ready. Love you guys. Bye. Take care of your mental health, my friends. It's the most important thing in the world. Peace.